Sting. It's Sting. Man, Tony Schiavone almost blew his voice out. What's up, everybody? We got War Games coming up for NXT. We got Sting and AEW. We got the AEW ratings. We got a bunch of ratings. We got some news, wrestling talk to get to. We got a big announcement by Famous B. And we get a whole bunch of other stuff. Here's the intro while we're getting people in here and you're clicking the like button. Uh, and you're staring down below at that juicy Streamlabs donation link and the super chat dollar sign button down below. And you're thinking of all the messed up shit that you want to say via donation tonight. Will we hit our goal? I don't know. But I do know that Chris Rock Rockwell was the last person to subscribe last night. And shout out to him. And I've been playing way too much Diablo. Let's talk about it. This is War Games, Sunday, December 6th, on WWE Network, War Games. If you're not excited for this one, I don't know what you've been doing in life. Pat McAfee leading his uh, mean bully peepee heads against... Ladies and gentlemen, Undisputed. Undisputed so over, they needed to create a heel uh, stable to uh, for them to go up against. Pretty good idea. And um, I like it. Not a bad idea. I'm into it. And tonight, we're going to have some fun. Let me, let me start off by this. Let me start off by saying this to Jake. We're going to bring up the ratings right away. We said... Um, we said uh, you. I said nine hundred thousand. You said nine twenty, right? Yes. Yes, that was our prediction for last night when we said how AEW would rate. Uh, the overnight ratings are out, and it's dab smack in the damn middle, Joe. <laughs> nine hundred and thirteen thousand, right in the middle wow. of our. I mean, you can't get any funnier than that. Like, no, right I mean, middle. spot on there. Price is right rules. I went over, but let me say you know, this to you. Let me say this to you, and I want to say thanks to everybody in the chat who's uh, been supporting us last couple of weeks, and my voice is feeling a little bit better today, a little sore, esophagus still right here, Esoph it's like a pinching feeling, I wonder if I have an infection, a sinus infection, but man, it has been wild, um, if it was Price is Right, I win, you said, but if it was yes. if it was rounding up, you'd win, so we really yes, just I call it. I think it comes down to next week's show. Yeah, it's going to- I think that's what we're going to have to do. Who's going to win the cup? The ratings guess the guessing ratings cup. I know we both gave out numbers last night, and uh, I have to go back and, and I want to you know confirm I, what we said. I'm but, pretty sure you said one million, even almost. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was just barely over a million. And I know you gave a number. I went like one million one hundred thousand or something. I yeah, went, I think that I think that was at one point one, and I was one even. So. So we and by the way, I think both we'll of our find out. both of our scores are reaching. I think a little bit. Do you see? I'm not so sure because they have oh. a pretty stacked show, and it's Sting, baby. Sting's back already. We have so much news to cover about Sting, as we thought we would. Uh, my goodness, what a debut! Famous B is in the house. Famous B, did you happen to see the debut of Sting last night in AEW? 
probably did now. Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Um, yeah, I, I saw some clips of it, so um, I thought it was actually pretty cool. It was really cool. Uh, it's a good deal for AEW. Uh, it's a good deal for the fans, and I'm pretty excited, man. Pretty Dude, exciting. Visually, it looked really good. Like it looked like that's the. I actually went back to watch it again. Like just as a cinematography thing. It looked really be- be- like beautiful is the word I-, I think of. Yeah, I said that last night, and I-, I stand by this. The production value for his debut was next level. They really did an excellent job. It fit with the winter is coming theme. Yeah. They've laid out so many hints and tips and tricks and all these little Easter eggs for us to figure it out. Darby Allen has been sitting in the rafters for weeks you know, and obviously it was homage to Sting. And so who was it? Cody that did the, the uh, Stinger Splash or the drop? One of one of them. You know what I mean? Like they've done things to, to drop these hints mm-hmm. that we, we, ha- we did think it was happening, but just on a pay-per-view, not on their weekly TV show. And for them to do this, you know, to pop the ratings, pro wrestling tees not only sold out, but sold the most shirts ever in 24 hours yeah. with the Sting merchandise. That's incredible. Congrats to them. So they said they have a lot of long nights in the workshop ahead of them, but that, you know, making orders for Christmas, but that was great. Uh, A lot more news would sting to come later, but it's a, it's a very good surprise for AEW. And you saw people talking about wrestling that don't normally discuss it today felt like uh, a bit of an attitude era kind of day with that news cycle. Mm -hmm. I had people talking to me about wrestling that don't, watch wrestling at all they haven't watched in 20 years since right. wcw went under i i saw a lot of you know all websites and publications that don't cover wrestling at all get involved espn is not one to usually cover anything but wwe for the most part and they made a big deal about sting returning you know i wonder if that ruffled some feathers but a, a lot of people just went nuts rightfully so for sting and with him, you know, causing such a buzz, I clearly think they're going to have definitely the biggest segment they've had, if not the highest rating. <laughs> yeah, this may be, um, you, ho, ho, you may ho, be looking at the biggest segment. Oh, oh ho, shit. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, it's back. It's Christmas time again. I got too drunk on Christmas night. I got too drunk on Christmas night. I should have hung myself from the Christmas lights. Santa just boom. Me and Daryl Schultz have oh. similar thoughts about how you're working with Impact and NWA. Right. The only real way that these companies can fight off WWE's global stranglehold over wrestling is returning to a territory type of system. Agree or disagree? Um, you know, it's not a bad idea, Soundwave 92 and, 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 and uh, Sith Negan, because why not? You're hyping up all the fans when you create this cross promotion stuff, and even if fans still don't watch one of the one one of the companies or not, the fans that do watch, I think, will find it exciting. I, I'm I've never been a big crossover person. I'm just not. I'm more interested when the regular talent can get over really highly. Um, that's always been my mi- mindset because more of a WWE guy, WWF guy. I never understood the ECW invasion back in the early 90s of WWF. You know, I never got into that. I just cared more about, I don't, where's Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon? I want their feud to come on next. What the hell are these guys doing? You know, there's, you know, I never, I wasn't, it, but for some of the fans that are really into it, it's it's kind of a, a fun thing. I never, not a big invasion guy either, but I do think that this is interesting me. So that's what I can say. Some people that's eye rolling. But for me, I'm interested. Uh, Famous B, what do you think about these companies invading each other or people jumping over to another company? I mean, I know that that's just a part of life in the indies. Like, remember Cody going to every promotion all over the place. So, you know, but how do you feel about the bigger companies like AEW, Ring of Honor, Impact, all crossing over each other? I'm all for it. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. 
um, there hasn't really been, um, I guess you could say, a TV, um, you know, wrestling promotions that has um, merged together to try to, I guess you could say, work together and, and, and kind of go against like a WWE. You know, you mentioned back in the day when ECW invaded WWF, but at the, at the same time, it's like, okay, well, WWF doesn't need to be invaded or merged with another um, wrestling promotion, so to speak. So the fact that you have uh, multiple uh, television um, wrestling promotions working together, I think could be pretty Super interesting jet. because that's Super one jet. thing that we haven't seen. Happy out of nowhere to, uh, angry wedding night, Go Jay. against WWE. My bad. I, I forgot I left the donos on. Let me pause them real quick. <laughs> you can continue. Uh, let me just pause real quick. Uh, yo, Soundwave, thanks for the $31. Yes, keep the donations coming. I need to buy Jake a wedding gift. So let's go. And thank you, Alex. I appreciate that as well. Uh, Spaz Phoenix, uh, was that? Oh, it was Alex said, happy out of nowhere pre wedding night, Jake. You guys are going to have a lot of fun tomorrow getting married. Now, are you going to go away with the kid, like, and leave the kid? I mean, I know it's COVID, so it's weird, but. No, everything with COVID related is just kind of, you know, put a damper on a lot of plans, unfortunately. So we'll, we'll be home, but we'll make the best out of it. So you at least got to send gonna, the kid. I'm going to ship Danny off somewhere, or, or I'll just lock her in the basement if I have to. What, you, now, why not go get a hotel, though? We thought about it, and it, it just wasn't feasible at this point. What are you we talking about? Work, We're going to get a hotel. We got to get a hotel. Come on, man. You got to get you get someone to watch the kids. I'll get you a hotel. You got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah. We'll send her, uh, Danny, to, to her aunts for the I'm night. dead serious. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, I, if you guys can do that, we're getting you a hotel. I don't care what the fuck. It can't be more than $100. Hotels are cheap as shit right now. You got to go yeah, to a hotel. especially with nobody booking. <laughs> Why they won't book? That's that- no, 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 I'm saying no one, no one going to hotels. They're they're desperate for business. Oh so yeah, cheap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to go. I don't care. I don't care what we're paying for your hotel. I don't care. People donate tonight so I can pay for Jake's hotel. No, no. Um, <laughs> I'm really going like that's crazy. No, you got to do that. If if you can do that, you let we're gonna we're doing that because that is great. Me and Leah did that. Remember our wedding night and yeah, it was just fun. You guys to, had a great stream from there. And, yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Just to be alone and in a a, a, a space in a hotel and we yeah we did the stream and. It was fun because we were sitting at the bar and we were drinking at the bar and these people were just coming to the bar with their stories or whatever they were saying. And that was one of the most fun things about it. And then, of course, you know, streaming in front of all you guys was fun, too. And then, of course, later on, we were hammered and we just romped it. Uh, That was fun. (laughs) Whatever you want to say. I don't know. Uh, It was just (laughs) nice, man. So, yeah, no, if we can get you there, we got to we'll talk. We got to talk offline. I'm dead serious. You got it. That's got to happen. Um Unless you, for some reason, really can't. But it's got to happen otherwise, if you can. Um, so, that being said, I'm sorry, Famous B. Go back to what you were saying. Oh, no, it's all good. And uh, I definitely want to mention how good Jake is looking. Man, oh, you're looking you. very very handsome, very sexy, my brother. Mm-hmm. Thank you. From the sexiest bastard himself, Mr. Famous B. I appreciate it. <laughs> Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Maybe. But but yeah, no, I think what they're doing is a good thing. I think they're on to something. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what they do next. You know what I mean? You don't really get too much inner promotional uh, mainstream uh, promotions working together. So I think this is something that could definitely boost the ratings, if not of anybody's definitely of impacts. But um, yeah, man, it's, it's pretty exciting what they're doing. And uh, I can't wait to see what they do next. Oh, my God. Are you serious in the chat with that? That's got to be a troll, right? That's not real. Okay. I'll have to check that out. It's got to be a troll, but you Ste- never know with WWE. He wrote, I know, Stephanie McMahon said that Elliot is getting the Warrior Award or whatever. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, bro. Can you imagine if they did that? What would happen? Holy God. I thought, I, I thought, I thought Stephen Gurman was going to get the Warrior Award next. <laughs> Steven's like, thank you, uh, W. Did you guys hear this uh, from, uh, this is pretty funny. A couple people did send me this, but Robert Heller just sent it to me. But I've seen it from a bunch of people. Okay, this is from uh, someone named Dan Patricks. It says, Sting is a corpse. No, Dan, your mom is. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) This is the way he reads it. That's just so funny the way he reads it. Okay, this no, Dan, your mom is. This is from uh, someone named Dan Patricks. It says Sting is a corpse. No, Dan, your mom is. Uh- 
Imagine reading those questions. <laughs> <laughs> he was so excited, too. So anyone crapping on Tony, he w- I guess he was genuinely surprised. And this is one of the coolest things about last night, that it wasn't spoiled beforehand. And that's so hard to accomplish in today's age of social media and how intertwined it is with wrestling. Everything gets leaked. So the, the fact that they were able to keep this under wraps is incredible. I mean, we all had an inkling and an idea that Sting was coming at some point. As soon as he was off, you know, he didn't resign with WWE, didn't continue his Legends contract. Unless you have other plans, you're a fool not to keep with the Legends contract for WWE because that's just free money, especially right now. So you knew he had plans elsewhere. Then the Mattel figure got pulled, and then his T-shirts and uh, merch got pulled out of WWE stores. So right. we knew something was going to happen. But apparently, they've had Sting signed for quite a while. And they were able to keep this under wraps. Uh, Matt Jackson was talking to a few different accounts today, and he said that this is something we've been sitting on for a while. And it's just one of those things where it's a secret and you're living with it. It's like, can we just do it so people can see it? So we don't know exactly how long, but it looks to be about early summer they've had this in the bag, locked down. Whoa. And that would line up, you know, as to as to how the events took place and when his stuff came out of the WWE store and for what they wanted but i mean it's definitely a ratings boost as we were talking initially this uh pumped up the ratings 913,000 fans tuned in to AEW while NXT brought in 658,000 you figure last week they had 710 or 12,000 fans when they updated the numbers for both shows so NXT went down by over like 50,000 and you, you gained 200,000 viewers on AEW that's fantastic for them. Yeah, and I, and I wonder if, you know, next week it won't be as promoted as this week in a way. Um, although you could argue that Sting promoting it is the biggest thing. I think there'll be, yeah, more word of mouth. Because like I said, having Paul said it in the chat, Paul 3, a few others, you know, have had people come up to them and talk about wrestling that have no interest in the current product. We're, Sting we're, is a big name. We're all a huge predicting draw. a million. We're all predicting a million, pretty much. Like, pretty much. I, I, I think With that being said... Happen. With that being said, I got a question for both of you guys. I know, Jake, you just mentioned how um, they've had this under wraps, I guess, since the summer. And kudos to them for, you know, keeping the kayfabe for this long. My question for both of you guys is why did they choose this random Wednesday to debut them? I, well, I see, guess I, I'm it's a little not bit random. confused as to what the catalyst was. Well, be, it, it seemed random to me because it's not a pay-per-view. It's, it, it wasn't on a pay-per-view. But it's not. It was, but here's the you know, here's If the, you know you're going to do this, it's like, why a random weekend? It's not know, random, December, though. But it's not something. random because here's okay. the thing. They, they promoted the shit out of this, almost like it's a pay-per-view event, calling it winter is coming when you know on wednesday winter is coming war is coming it's a special you know AEW themed wednesday night with you know uh kenny omega is defending the world title against john moxley in a match that could go 60 minutes you know so it was like kind of booked like a mini pay-per-view special event right so for weeks they booked that they they booked this winter is coming this big theme and you knew you they were going to have one of their best nights of the year because it was so heavily promoted and you're looking at Omega versus Moxley in the main event and and there's a couple other things that they did too right with this night and so they decide to debut Sting on a night like this where they knew viewership would be at its highest so i don't think it's that ra- i think it was not random i think it was pretty calculated and they Yeah knew- they they knew what they were doing that this was uh, specifically kept in mind now the only thing i would have changed is tony khan's tweet from what two or three weeks ago where he was like this changes the culture of wrestling and you know the the, the power shift and all of these different things this was a shift in power with them working with impact with them going ahead and and procuring that you know business investment with uh, being sting that's a shift in power that that puts a small dent in the WWE surely not you know maybe the way that that you would think they need to be but it will every every piece adds up to a bigger part of this picture right if they want to go ahead and make it to WWE's TV viewership levels things like this need to happen they've been working on telling compelling competent stories and building up characters and as focused as they are on legends thankfully we haven't seen 
uh, you know, a complete burial of talent or anything like that come about. It's It's been pretty even as far as building new talent and still paying tribute to the legends. And um, tonight we're going to pay gotcha. tr- we're going to pay tribute tonight to the largest donator. Now, I don't think Famous B watches every week. I think you kind of check in on the highlights and what's been going on. So, like, if you were doing that, you know, you'd be like, I don't get it. A Wednesday night he debuts. But basically right. they've been like promoting every week this idea of like oh the winter is coming and all these things so you know it's it's almost like a night after raw audience right like it's a it's a pretty big audience compared to normal so i think that that's where things went for them and so i i get you know because if they do it on pay-per-view right you end up with um two what 200 and maybe two hundred thousand people see it you Plus, know. you don't have that option of the holy shit tune in. Where that's they they got a lot of that last night. Where right. oh my god, if you're watching NXT, tune in now to AEW. Or if you're not watching AEW, or no, you know, hurry up and throw it on right now. Right. And, and they okay. had a lot of people. Do, I mean, their YouTube had over a million hits on Sting's debut video. And a, a lot of things are, are are you know going right for them at this point in time. Also, yeah. the now, how do you guys? How do you guys feel about the position and the timing of when they actually debuted them? And, you know, I guess the situation of what was going on at the time. Would you done anything different? Would you have put them with uh, other uh, workers well, on the roster? Jake has a, or how Jake, do you guys feel about that? Jake has the best take on this because I, I, I think I had no problem with what they did. But, Jake, I think you said to me last night that it was kind of like almost forced in, in a way. But, but I... I'm gonna let you. It was good. Uh, yeah. You you say what you 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 say what you think about it, and then I'm gonna tell you what I think about it. Go ahead. My, my general just and and what I said last night to recap was I I like the fact that he came out and he was gonna be the one to you know break up the numbers advantage that they had or, mm-hmm. or the power advantage from Team Taz wreaking havoc on the, on the Nightmare family. The only thing is is that I, I wish the heels didn't disperse and and run away so quickly, or at least you didn't see them. Uh, have that fear instilled into them that Sting was supposed to bring about. I think they I did. I we, think that's why they they took off. They took off. But I wish we got to see that conveyed better. That was really what I was hoping for. And even initially, you know, that the, the Sting coming out for the save is uh, an interesting thing for them to build because obviously, you know, he he looked down everyone in the ring, and and it seems like he's going to be doing something obviously with Darby Allen included. So I'm compelled to see what his story is and where he's going from there. But it wasn't a bad debut at all. It was it was very, very well done. I enjoyed it. My only minor gripe, like I said, is I, I he didn't even have to get physical, but I would have liked to once he pulled the bat out of his jacket, then you visually see everyone dump out of the ring more. I think you, they were just gone. You I think, know? I think, so I think you might be right, criticism. especially especially if you could have had the heels on the outside looking in kind of like, oh, shit. But um, I, I think the purpose of getting the heels out of there and getting Sting in there with the faces – was just to sort of be like to give him moments with the top guys, like yeah. he's with Cody. Oh, he's staring at Darby Allen. Darby Allen's the TNT champion, you know. So he gets these big moments with the with the top guys or some of the guys are trying to build up. Um, but I know what you're saying because it was like the heels were gone, which was fine because that makes sense that they would run, and the faces would want to be in the ring and look Sting in the eye. I guess. Yeah, um, didn't hurt it at all. Still. A- you know, incredible moment. Like his, I said, I, I got goosebumps from his it, moment with Allen. Darby Allen was the best one when they something about yeah, that that stare down. I don't know what it was, but yeah, that stare down was like really interesting. I don't know why, but it just felt like something. Now, well, it felt like he was looking at him in a, in a funhouse mirror. You know, essentially because he was looking at a younger version of himself in some ways. The, not just the face paint, but. You know, they, they, they kind of have a similar look in the facial department. Like, I could see a, a resemblance in the two. So it kind of looked like Steve was looking at a younger version of well, himself. Plus, it was like, oh, cool. I don't think you know what to make about Darby Allen sometimes either. So I think it's one of those True. things, like, I don't know what, you know, what, what exactly are you? He's and, a very interesting, enigmatic person. You know, he's he's got a lot of layers to him. So, you know, so and we yeah. haven't seen that much explanation of his character either. we just seen him hurt himself. Now, so. Famous B asked about what we thought about the... What, how he debuted in a way and again it, it's sort of a thing like you know Cody's getting beat up the bad guys are getting the upper hand and all of a sudden Sting shows up that, that's sort of how it happened you know if you didn't see, if you only saw the in, ending clip famous B so I don't know how you could have you know I, I think they booked it fine because he shows up and I think he's gonna say something along the lines of 
you know, that he's there to make sure there's order in AEW and things don't go crazy. Like he saw, he saw what happened in TNT, TNT or whatever, TNA rather. He saw what happened in WCW and factions of toxicity or factions of bad or whatever got in the way of good pro wrestling or got in the way of, you know, things the way they should have gone. He's like, for years we had great championship matches and, and things like that. And in WCW, you saw this this group take over the company and ruin it. You know, TNA, you know, things went south, you know, over there. I mean, they probably won't bring that up because they're working with Impact. But you know what I mean? He's sort of there to be the guy who keeps an eye on things and make sure stuff is right. And they may right. they may even make him a commissioner type of guy because they need to pass the buck to somebody else. And it's too much on Cody and them when they're trying to play characters that they're involved in the wrestling, when when they're also breaking kayfabe that they're in charge, and also shoot it's a shoot that they're in charge, and they're and they're kayfabing that they're in charge. So all signs point to well that that leads to a million plot holes for you, unless you say that Tony Khan has removed you, you know, removed your status as far as any ability out here, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he's put most of the power to Sting. So now it's Tony Khan, Sting, then Cody, then the Young Bucks and those guys. So the f- number one guy is Tony, and then all decisions after that go to Sting. And if you Yeah, can, I'd, be, I'd be okay with that. Right, and if you can do that, then you can really sort of start building this believability and getting rid of the plot holes right because no matter what wrestling's fake everybody knows or wrestling's not you know it's choreographed whatever you want to say whatever people say out there but the fact of the matter is now you just can't stop thinking about how well why would cody's character do this when he could just go in the back and change things or whatever you need to get rid of that it's a huge it's 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 a plot hole that's all it comes down to it's a plot hole. yeah and it causes more problems See? than it's worth yeah, so you would automatically assume that maybe Sting is um, going to automatically go into a program with Cody, right? Because right. Um, the way that I was envisioning it in terms of how to debut him maybe would have been a little bit more towards the end of the show during the chaos and all this, this, and that right. to where, you know, he comes out, he doesn't say anything, but you kind of go off the air with that cliffhanger. Matt was Hardy. this the guy that was involved? You know what I mean? Kind of deal. You know now that's I mean? Matt Hardy's kinda... debut. Matt Hardy did that. Remember Jericho was like, who else are you going to oh, have or whatever? Right. And then blue, 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 and they go up to the rafters and there's Matt Hardy. Like, <sighs> Unfortunately, with no fans. Yeah. At least they had some fans last night for this, I, and the fans hey, were going nuts. I added sound to that, and it sounds pretty good. Everybody go look it up on Twitter somewhere. But no, Famous yeah, B, you right. added the audio, I remember, and that made the, the moment, but I wish they had just even a few fans at that. I was still marking out at home, so I couldn't even have heard the fans anyway because I was just yelling and being a mark, so it was great. Um, but it's no, just, I feel like we were expecting Matt to come. Like we were just waiting for like, all right, yeah. any day now, any day as we're with this with sting, especially because even though they built winter is coming up to be a, a pay-per-view caliber show, I was not expecting it. Not well, on the TV. And, me, and I, they had the advantage being on TV to get more eyes to their TV product. So I know you weren't kind of on board with what I was saying last night and I don't always convey what's in my head that well blame it on my speech therapist whatever you want broken brain but i know what i was thinking and my worry with impact being involved kind of came to fruition today a little bit by some of the news that we have this is not really a spoiler i don't want to you know jake before you real quickly let me get this out before you get into that yeah i just wanted to address that famous b said why did he come out in the second hour um i also think famous b the reason why sting came out in the second hour in the first hour rather he came out in the first hour as opposed to ending the show i believe and Jake believes, I believe, is because they wanted to do something in the middle of the show because not only does it generate buzz for next week, but it also generates buzz in the show. So people are going to now flip over like, holy shit, Sting exactly. just debuted on AEW. And now you get all eyes on the TV for the main event, which is Moxley and uh, Omega. So that's my answer to that. That's a great point. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a great that, point. And, and everyone was already thinking like, oh, this is definitely going to be a, a title change happening because of how they built this show. Then when Sting debuted, they said, well, that's the big thing. So now there's not going to be a title change. And they kind of threw out a few red herrings in that main event match where, you know, oh, my God, is Kenny injured at this point? You know, we're not sure. And is it going to be a time limit draw? It's getting you know close to the end. What's happening here? And lo and behold, that wasn't the case. They had their plan to, to kind of, you know, swerve all of us. But Here's the thing. Impact, bit of a spoiler here. Not a, I'm not revealing anything. It's just 
It's already taped for the rest of the year. The next four shows are Whoa. in the bag. They're done. Wow. So there's not going to be and if and if they already had AEW wrestlers on Impact, it mm-hmm. would have come out. It would have been talked about. It would have been so we know there's no AEW like wrestlers going into Impact at least not for the month of December. So, so what's happening is Don Callis and Kenny are filming something they assume in Canada to be inserted into Impact this week, but it's okay. not going to be a live segment or anything. Yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. So well, that's that was perfect. that was a bit of my worry, and that's why I said, now, you know, the more interviews and things we hear, that was from Mike Johnson on PW Insider talking about that, you know, saying that the, the rest of the shows are already taped, they're in the bag, that's done, and they're just going to drop something with Kenny and Don into the final broadcast. Okay, um, that that's, you know, uh, what was one of my concerns last night. You know, I wasn't voicing the best, but you have this possibility you're getting people excited for the invasion. And what was the first big media storm that came out of this dream matches? I want to see this one versus this one. We even got on board with that last night talking about Sammy Callahan. And, you know, there's a million possibilities of, of all these dream scenarios that you could have. And I guess according to both the young bucks and fightful, they don't really have plans for that yet. That's something they hope, but According to Fightful Select, Summit Impact Wrestling had heard the news about Callis working with AEW, but they were originally told by management there wasn't much to it. It was known that Don Callis would be working an angle with AEW, but they weren't sure about the extent of the angle. Wow. And nobody expects a full crossover between both companies. Again, that's coming from Fightful. And then the Young Bucks say here that they're uncertain what this partnership really means. Uh, They said, people are already hitting me up like, oh, my God, can you imagine Young Bucks versus insert, you know, they're talking about Motor City Machine Guns 10 years later. But they said, uh, our immediate plans, I can't just give away right now, but my dream, uh, they said here, is if I had it my way, I would think about all the possible dream matches. So to me, that sounds like we're not getting any sort of real invasion. We're not getting a talent change or any type of like roster sharing. Well, good. It just I mean, seems like well, it's going to be a uh, hold for a I while. I think that's kind of good, but I also think it could be just no selling the whole deal too. I I don't know because I mean we definitely know for the next four weeks there's nothing. Next four shows, and right. this was a chance for them to to really like pull out all the stops. I mean they might have plans, and I could be totally wrong. Like I said, I'm reserving judgment. I'm just concerned because invasion angles and things of that nature don't always turn out great as we've seen in the past and this is the advantage that they could have as where wwe kind of has a small version of their own territory thing going on right i mean they have nxt then they have their main roster and they have nxt uk and then they did want to do something in japan for a while but that got you know taken away (laughs) especially with covid and whatnot but all in all, they do have their own little territories, and then they they're able to you know take from from other indie promotions. So for AEW to have access to NWA and Impact and be able to share wrestlers, and that'd be great for them. This is something that that should be happening because you know competition obviously breeds creative success, and there's a, there's a lot of benefits to them working together. I just don't think that we're we have to temper our expectations basically. I think everybody's psyched up for this huge invasion on I'm Tuesday. Not, I, I don't know who is. Who the hell is psyched up for There's that? There's a lot of people with that. running with this right now, and I, I think a lot of fans are... Name I, them. I'm going to call them idiots. It's been trending. I mean, dream match scenarios have been trending on Twitter nonstop. Who's a dream match in, in TN in Impact? One of the big ones that everybody wants to see is the Young Bucks taking on the Good Brothers because that was supposed to kick off AEW Dynamite when the show started. Man, I guess you're right, but I mean, I, I I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, as an AEW fan, I couldn't give a shit. I don't I have no, I don't give a crap. I have no interest in any of that. I don't care. There's a few things that do interest me, but the idea of them having you know either a shared talent pool or uh, a, a storyline where they're doing something with impact, you know, in the sense of like our show's better and you got to get your championship back. Yeah. It seems to be where it's just, it's going to be Don Callis happens to also, you know, be involved with impact. There's this. And then Kenny's good friends with him. Like, I, I think that's all that they're going to go with in the story. I don't think we're getting this dream scenario, at least not anytime soon. So I'm just trying to 
well, temper expectations, basically. Let me chuck a couple donations out here real quick, and then uh, I want Famous B to tell us about his... Uh, Famous B has a big uh, thing coming up. We'll talk about that in one second here. Super Chat Party! Yeah. Cheap plug, Jake, and I just talked the hell out of War Games. Join us for the preview tomorrow right after SmackDown. Pancakes, pancakes, <laughs> pancakes, 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 pancakes. Well, then me, I guess me and Jake don't have to talk about War Games. He already did it. Um, just like Jesse and Drew uh, do their show for free instead of on Patreon. <laughs> uh, Spaz Phoenix, thanks for the five dollars, man. Eat up those pancakes, motherfucker, up in Canada. Boom, super yeah. chat. Party. Yeah, we went more in depth into the NXT side of things since we really don't cover that here much. Right. And I'm looking forward to War Games, though. That is going to be. I I think it's going to be an exciting show. And like I said before, even if you're not an NXT fan, War Games never disappoints. That's if you like wrestling in general. Mm -hmm. That's such a car crash type show. It's always fun. You could have not tuned in to anything super NXT, chat and you'll you'll like this. Party. My guys, Joe and Jake DeMarco, the tag team champion. Mwah. Let's get some posts shown and all of some laughs. Let Jeez. me tell you something. Tonight, this show, out of nowhere, is brought to you by Botch Club. That's right. Famous B tonight, brought to you by Botch Club. But also, Famous B is not only brought to you by Botch Club on Instagram and Russell Daily on Instagram, but, but, he's, but he's also in a new show that is on Crackle. And it's called Heroes of Lucha Libre. What the hell is this all about, Famous B? Tell me about this. Holy shit. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Heroes of Lucha Libre. That's right. Yeah, it's something, um, a little project that I've been working on since, um, actually, since the summer. Um, what it was, was um, I actually got um, hired for this project uh, through. Um, <laughs> My bad. I have the donos on still. Stephanie oh, tweeted that Elliot Page is getting the Warrior Award at next Hall of Fame. That can't be real. Are we? I looked. I didn't see it. Are you serious, Ratnik? I'm, uh, I didn't see it either. So that is, if that's true, dude, we're that's so weird. Especially since the Warrior wanted that award to go to the people that worked in the back at WWE. It's just every. Oh my God, Ratnik! Thank you for the donation. We'll check it out though. We'll check it out. Okay, Famous B. I'm sorry, Ratnik. Thank you for the donation, Ratnik. We'll take a look at it. All right, back to Famous Beast plug. We got to get this uh, big plug out there. I want to know about this too. I don't even. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> yeah, no. I actually, um, like I was saying, I got. Um, I actually was recommended to uh, do commentary for this project uh, by Conan. So um, he hit me Damn. up about it, and then you know I went down to the studio. I did like a quick little audition or whatever, and um, the rest was history. And then um, they called me in to do. Um, to do commentary and do voiceovers for some of the matches that they had already had pre-filmed from uh, previous shows that they had did uh, prior to um, putting the show together. And, um, you know, they built a set, a nice looking set for us. And uh, we did film cutscenes and things like that. And, you know, now you have Heroes of Lucha Libre. So I'm getting it cracking on Crackle right now. It's uh, a new original series uh, by Crackle, and you can find it under uh, television shows under original series. So I hope you guys enjoy it. You know, it is your boy, Famous B, giving his, um, you know, commentary skills a go. Uh, so you guys can all check out and, um, you know, either shit on me or not <laughs> and yeah. review it and all that good stuff. But um, it's, it's actually uh, pretty fun. You know, I, I've had a chance to watch a couple of, of the episodes, so I'm pretty impressed with how it came out. So I hope you guys like it. Who's uh, doing commentary with you? Uh, it's a guy named uh, Kevin Casanova, who's actually um, an independent wrestler as well out here. In yeah, I, I've seen a little bit of his work, actually. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. It says that it's going to take like traditional Mexican wrestling and kind of mix it with a comic book feel. That's pretty cool. It sounds pretty intriguing, anyhow. Yeah, it looks like it looks like that. It looks kind of like uh, Mortal Kombat or something like the underground thing, like the lucha kind of had going on a little bit, but a little bit more, um, like you just said, so sort of superhero aspect in a way. Yeah. Right. Right. And this correct. is all scripted, correct? It will actually, I mean, as in terms of my, um, you know, a part <laughs> or, you know, the part of the commentators, we basically freestyle like 80% of this season. So a lot oh, of it, I, I was referring to the storyline, but that's good to know that you're able oh, to at least speak freely. 
Correct, correct. The storyline absolutely is absolutely scripted. Yes, correct. Um, but in terms of calling the match and things like that, like even like the cutscenes that we did, a lot yeah. of it was freestyle. A lot of it. You yeah, know, you like you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. That, that's the best when you when you don't even know, you know. Except for those yeah, key those of, little key right. times where you do need to know. That's when it's a little bit, ooh, let's do that again because you know, there's those little key moments. They rarely happen, but once in a rare moon, you're like, "Oh no! If I had known that was happening, I might have sold this other exactly. thing." I'm, you know, but normally, exactly. if, n normally, if you just call it as it is, then the thing that happens works out anyway because you are reacting to what everybody else is seeing. The audience doesn't know what's happening, and so neither really should you. But right, you know, there's those one, those once in a right. while. Right, yeah, that's well, sick, bro. It, it, yeah, it's pretty cool, too, when you think about it, because the Lucha Libre tradition, you know, the culture has been around for so long, and they said they, you know, they really want to honor the heritage and be able to show fans. I picked up Famous that, B because I told, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I heard he had a big dick. Boom. <laughs> they they want to show fans that grew up with, you know, their grandfather or, or father watching, you know, basically Lucha Libre wrestling. Now you can share those emotions with your kids and help kind of inspire future generations. That's pretty cool. So. I, I can't wait to check this out. So I is, guess there's what eleven parts all together so far. Is Conan Correct. producing I believe it? Eleven or twelve, yes. Is Conan in on the production of this? Is that why he, or is he just a talent scout guy, agent type? He's affiliated uh, behind the scenes, right? So uh, he's not an on-screen character, but he is affiliated with a uh, product, you know, behind the scenes. What's the um, what's the outlook for it? Is it there an idea to already do another season, or they're just going to wait to see how much how this does? Well, that's what I was told is that they definitely want to, um, you know, produce multiple seasons and things like that. Um, we had the advantage that the matches were already pre-filmed. Right. So in order to do a second season, you know, we would have to go in and they would have to film more matches, do more shows, film more matches and things like that. So, you know, that's up in the air with the whole COVID and things like that. But um, I'm pretty sure, uh, depending on how this first season goes, you know, they, they'll probably want to get the ball rolling and film some more matches and uh, shoot for a second season because that was pretty much what I was told was the goal is to film multiple seasons and um, really um, just get it going, you know? Well, not – hi, God, I just saw a post that's making me rattled. Um, I won't – I'm not – it's not a wrestling thing. I'll talk about it later. I just can't believe it. I talked about uh, – something completely different and it's i'm going off the rails so i'll tell you about it later guys um but no i, I have something i wanted to bring up quick joe is yeah. that uh, matt the misfit actually brought this to my attention earlier he was one of the first ones but when you go to the aew roster page and you go all the way through their roster sting is part of the active roster he's listed as a zero and zero singles tag team and trio record but they don't have managers they don't have you know, any of the, you know, Arn Anderson isn't in there. Jake Roberts isn't in there. So Sting being in there makes me think he's going to be an active wrestler. No, they, they're they saying, yeah, well, no, 100% they're saying that he's full-time. That, so, that's what I've heard repeatedly throughout the day is that exact phrase, full-time, yeah. full-time, full-time. We've heard that he's gone through a lot of the same treatments of stem cells and whatnot. Uh, he had the and, same neck stuff that Edge had. Yep. So apparently he's doing, you know, he's got rid of the spinal stenosis and is doing much better. And uh, I, if he can pull out these matches, that I mean, that'd be great. I, I was kind of weary about seeing it, but hey, uh, if, if they can do it reliably and safely, then more power to him. I just want to be entertained, you know, and make sure he's safe in the process. That image of him collapsing really stuck with me. Like that was a, a you've seen wrestlers take horrific bumps before and you're like, oh, God, that looked painful. Yeah. You know, I think of Mick Foley coming down through the cell the second time and you're like, oh, that that didn't look like that was supposed to happen. You know, things like that. But when Sting collapsed with that Rollins match, that that image just, you know, was really upsetting and, and such a harrowing thought to have of his last time in the ring was him being hurt. So. Hopefully they can cleanse his record of that, but I, I just don't want him to get injured again. That's that's my worry. Yeah. But it is intriguing to see that it looks like, all in all, he's going to be an active wrestler. I mean, he might be a manager as well. He could do some type of authoritative thing, but looks like he's wrestling. Seems to be all but certain. 
Yeah, and and by the way, a real quick thing. Um, a lot of people sent me a message like, "Yo, Joe, I'm on the Patreon tier, thirty dollars, forty dollars, and whatever else." I got messages from a few people, and they were like, "Why isn't my thing showing up on the list?" Um, I don't know why Patreon did this, but it, for whatever reason, it it just it still hasn't updated yet. So I don't see anybody until the fifth usually. So my bad on that. I'll have the producer tier fixed. Like for instance, like Sith Negan goes, "I'm not on the producer list, but I'm like the biggest patron." Um, and you're right. I don't understand that. So on the fifth, it will be fixed for you guys. So I'm sorry. June bug's not on there. He's at 30. I think it has something to do that over 25 is not showing up and, but this happens every month. So there's a bunch of people that are not on the list that should be, there should be about 25 to 30 of you. And there's only about, I don't know, 17 showing up. So I'll have that fixed for you. Um, I, I use an auto Excel generator to do it. I download the Excel sheet and then I copy paste it into the thing. So I, I just have to wait two days and then I can auto generate it. Otherwise I'll manually put it in, but we'll fix it, uh, by the fifth. So sorry to everybody who that happened to on the producers tier. Um, but yeah, by the fifth, everything should be showing up. Uh, but yeah, Sith sent me a message and, and like seven other people did too. Um, it's crazy. Um, did, did, uh, who, who sent me this? Um, uh, Hey, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Like, uh, Constipated Rock sent me something. And, um, just let me know what you would like to do about that, about what you said, because I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but I think I know what you mean. Um, let me know what's up, uh, Constipated Rock with what you want to do or what you want to say or whatever it is. Um, just let me know what you want to advertise, say, do, or not advertise or whatever. Um, just let me know I'm game. Once you're, once you're in the $25 spot and above. I mean, you guys can sort of like say, hey, I want to plug my brother's, you know, cigar shop or, hey, I want to uh, plug my Twitter account all the time and or, hey, I want to do a show. I want to do a podcast with you once a month or, hey, I want to do that. Whatever it is, just let me know in the um, on Patreon. So just yeah, let, you're called let me a know. producer for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're yeah. also you're also producing the show for me, like for all these things that we do. So it's 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 all that stuff. So let us know, let me know, and we can figure that out, and I can... Fill the, fill in the fridge! Fill the fridge. This is important and unrelated to wrestling, but coronavirus deaths in America are nearly back at the worst it has ever been. Daily deaths have been climbing up to over 2,000 per day, and we are about to approach 3,000 a day, becoming the new normal. Really? Fuck. U.S. needs more precautions. Thanks for the donation. Are you serious? Is that really up that high? Let me see. Yeah, uh, numbers here in Connecticut were. Damn. I think they doubled overnight, according to the news, and it was it was you know everywhere is getting bad. It seems worse, not bad, worse. Mm. Deaths in. Give it a hell yeah. It's not true in mass. Jake's half the man he used to be literally getting sexier <laughs> by the day. No wonder she said yes. Smiley face. Good luck <laughs> on your wedding day. Too sweet, yeah. bro. Love you, gesture. Thank you so much, Too Sweet. I appreciate it greatly. Boom. I think she could. She had to say yes. She saw the tip. Uh, too Sweet, thank you, man. Well, I don't know about you guys, but deaths in Massachusetts are still not that crazy. Give it a hell yeah! Then Triple H said that he's ready to work with other companies. Lol, and the Sting thing was real big cause. My coworker was talking to me about Sting, and they haven't watched wrestling since they was kids, and they all in their 20s. Wow. wow, yeah, see? So again, more people just you know, tuning in because of Sting. Thank you, twenty seven Freddie Mitchell. That's a crazy fact. And yeah, that's one of the things I, I'm I'm got on my list to discuss after is suddenly Triple H now, after last night's impact, you know, <laughs> announcement. They're like, Yeah, we'll work with people. Party. They love to work with people now, yeah, all of a sudden. Yesterday felt like one of the biggest moments in recent memory and it happened by our alternative company. Hype is real. NXT is so boring. Yeah, I mean, I think NXT is all right. They're just kind of cruising along. But AEW has that shock factor and hype factor that they just don't, you know, you just don't see, you know, on NXT in a way. NXT is its own solid thing. But AEW has the ability to go up and down. Like, really bad things happen and really awesome things happen. You've always nailed that. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Like, I'm really excited for war games, but 
nothing quite hit the level that they did with the Sting debut last night. And it's not just because it was a legend. They, they built it up nicely. So it made sense in, in the sense, too. Um, you, you don't always get that with NXT. Like, we'll get really good competitive matches, but I just feel like they're lacking still in the character department. We were talking before about the pillars of NXT and how there's, you know, set men and set women that are, are really the, the prime examples of what NXT is. And mm. it's hard to differentiate between them when you when you, you know, take away some minor things. So, you know, not to bring it up, but this was the thing that I kind of went, oh, my God, about with COVID, because I, I was worried that th- this whole COVID thing, it was a way for the. uh the health industry to start making a lot of money off us. And I'm not saying I'm not, I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on right now, but you know, like flu vaccines were way down. They were way down flu vaccines. And apparently they're going to give you this card. Now here's the card you'll get eventually when you get COVID-19 vaccine, everyone will get a card Uh. they can put in their wallet that will tell them, what they had, and when their next dose is due, says Dr. Kelly Moore, Immunization Coalition. And so that's a little scary. But let me, let me, so let me um, play both sides real quickly for that, because this could be... That's to verify that you got it, you know, so this way you can prove and don't just say, well, I got it, you need some proof. Well, it's scary, though, that you're going to have to verify that you got it. But here's the thing, from a a more scientific left-leaning approach... I would say, well, this is simply because you're going to actually need, depending on the dose the U.S. buys and and what country you're in, uh, they're going to need to to hit you twice because it's that type of, that's how you have to take the vaccine twice. It's one of those type of vaccines. What is it, 28 days apart? So, yeah, so you're going to have to have one. You're going to have to write it down and remember when to get the next one, then go get the next one. So then on top of that, you've got the card to show people when you had it. And you've, you've got the numbers in front of you in case they say, okay, we found out that, you know, you really need to have it every nine months for it to be effective. Um, so that way you have the card so you know when your nine months is coming up for the next one. Now that's coming at things from a scientific left-leaning uh, version. Now from, from a more right-leaning thing, you're telling me that I'm not going to be able to do certain things because I don't have this card that tells you when I got vaccinated? That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, against I mean, freedom. It sucks. And why doesn't it I just get it, go though. immunization record? Why doesn't it just go all your immunization record with the rest of your history? Right. Why isn't it the same as your regular flu shots or your H1N1 yeah. or your... Why do you need a separate card? Tuberculosis. I guess because COVID isn't the same as the rest of those types of things and... So that that's pretty much what it comes down to. They just it's better than tattooing people. I'd rather carry a card, obviously. But good God, I mean, what's to, to verify that you have it before a, you go into a, well, it's store, a virtual? You know? It's a virtual tattoo. It's the same. It's almost the same thing. It's like it's literally yeah, a virtual. It's tattoo. It's just not permanent. But in in China, we know that you know you can't ride the subway a certain way if you do something messed up. You know, if you like piss on a monument in the square, you know what I mean. You'll be banned from riding public transportation for a year or for life or whatever and they put that on your license so i wonder like you know like like in america you know in most countries you police people like okay you 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 drunk drive okay we're gonna ban your license for a little while or something or you get in trouble but now we're kind of going into the territory of you know oh you didn't get this done you're banned from using the train or public restrooms or you know, you're not actually not allowed to go into public areas like restaurants. So you actually shouldn't be in the restaurant. So like you could be, you know, you talk about stop and frisk in New York. You could potentially be stopped and carted on your vaccine if you're in a restaurant or the restaurant may require you show your vaccine card. So that could be, I don't know. I'm so not to divide, not to, you know, skew off from wrestling into COVID, but it's a little, you know, we may, you, wrestling fans may need it to get in, or will it be by the government, or will it be by the company? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure what this means. Now, now, if it's a card that's just made for yourself, if this card is just simply made so you can put it in your wallet so you know when to get vaccinated or whatever, I mean, okay. Still a little bit, maybe a little bit I mean, strange. it's exactly a month apart, so shouldn't be that hard, but... <laughs> but is that why they're doing it? Does you this think? card signify uh, that yeah, you have it, or, or 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 you don't? 
which one does this card signify? Do you have it? Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, that you yeah, had the just... shot. You'll get it after you get the vaccine, the first vaccination, and then it'll tell you when you need the second gotcha. one. From what I'm reading. Wow. And, and today's society, the, the day and age we live in, that's just that just sets everyone up for ridicule. You know what I mean? There's a lot of trolls out there, and as soon as somebody see you with that car, you, you mean to tell me you're not getting clown? Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, but you may need it to get into to grocery shop. Right, right. So it's a straight like setup to yeah. just be more bullied and more, um, you know, just ridiculed and laughed at. You know what I mean? The, like I mean, this. they're 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 t- they're attacking people. If you don't have a mask, they're attacking you in the stores. Listen, I'm you know, I'm on board for what I, we we all went, we were all got a Christmas tree tonight. We went out to get the Christmas tree tonight. Um, and you know. We all wore we all wore masks, you know. We all wear masks, and that's what we, you know. Everybody was wearing a mask. Everybody shopping for the trees outside, you know, were distancing and wearing masks. You know, nobody, you know, it's so much easier because everybody's just on board, you know. But if somebody had, you know, not been wearing a mask, I don't think anybody would have been tackled either. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's but but at the same time, you go, oh man, everybody else is trying to do something, even if it doesn't work. We're trying to do something. You know, why aren't you wearing yours? But the idea that you'd have to maybe have to have a card with you to go to a restaurant and stuff like that, we're going to find out how how America and how the world maybe deals with stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I don't know, man, what to say about that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I definitely think that people right-leaning are going to freak out over this. But I also think that, you know, people on the left are going to be more than happy to, here you go, you know. You know, just, just like after 9-11, you know, we were like, oh, you know, take our freedom away, you know, the airports, you know, take naked pictures of us going into the airport now and frisk us and play with our pants and whatever else they did with uh, the TSA and things like that and the Patriot Act and the the NSA is listening to all of us now. You know, so I think that we we gave up a bunch of our freedom for safety, you know, and this is another thing where now this makes more sense because it's like a path and you know there's like a sickness and all these other things but again we're going to lose we're definitely going to feels like we're about to lose something else you know not only do we have to deal with covid and stuff we're about to lose something else and and by the way i think hospitals are at capacity in california i just saw that like 90 percent or close you know about that, Jay? Yeah, I know connecticut we only have uh 1800 beds and they were at 1200 with covid cases wow so the worry was, you know, they, they were, that was just COVID cases at 1,200. They only have 1,800 total between all the hospitals available at this time. And you don't know how many other spots are taken up already from heart attacks or, you know, common colds or, what, what you know, any other emergency going on. So they were worried about that here. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty close in L.A. It's 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 pretty close to uh, capacity in L.A. They're still they're still doing daily briefings, um, you know, just giving the numbers mm-hmm. and results. So, yeah, it's it's at an all time high here. The real scary well. thing, the real scary thing right now coming up on uh, January and February, right? December, January and February. The scary thing is for the hospital workers like they're the ones who are dealing with this. You know what I mean? So like when they're the ones that are going to suffer based on our actions, right? The, the hospital workers like you, you, you may never get it. Your, your immune system might kick its ass, right? Your immune system kicks COVID's ass. Jake's immune system even might kick COVID's ass. Everybody's immune system's kick, kicking its ass. Yeah. Who knows with you? But you know what I mean? Like, so like we're like, whatever, you know, whatever. But say, you know, you, you give it to like nine people and three of them have a problem you know, then they give it to one person and then it starts adding up. And, and the people that suffer are the people, obviously the old people that die and the sick people that die, or maybe even the younger people that happen to have a problem rarely, but that happens, you know, the, the hospital workers are the ones dealing with it. That That's what I, that's who I feel bad for. We're all sitting here arguing about what's real, not real, what's important, what not important. But what is fact is that the hospitals are just screwed right now. Like these, there's just people fucking. They're triage and shit again. They're gonna be opening up cabins and tents. Um, yeah, they're they're doing the pop up stuff, you right? Know, planning for it, you know, where they can. National Guard will do their emergency, whatnot. I mean, but they still have a bunch of bodies in refrigerator trucks from New oh, York because they had nowhere to deal with them at that point. So that's scary. Um, yeah, there's no, but to me, there's no reason why the kids 
I don't I don't understand why the kids would get the vaccine under 30. Is that Danny next to you? Yes, indeed. What up, Danny? Are you getting the vaccine? Day? See, like her, she doesn't need it because the kids will kick its ass. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Like, and, get, and give it to before, the old people. You know, they they the, haven't the, tested on the kids a lot. Right. It's like, dude, I mean, probably the older Americans are the ones that need it. 75 and over first, right? They need it first. And probably a lot of them are willing to do it. Like, listen, give it to me first. That way, if something's weird with it and I die, whatever, I live my life. Don't give it to some young kid who then develops something a couple of years later. You know, like, I'm, and then start giving it to 60 and up and then 50 and up. And then you may not even need to give it really to anybody under 30. I, I don't know, but maybe you do because then they could spread it. But I don't think they can. I think, isn't, and the thing, isn't the science right now that for the most part, like people under 20, really don't spread it because they don't get it enough to become infectious. Yeah, I've heard claiming yes that the no. highest cases, I'm sorry, Jake, I didn't mean to cut no, you off. Go right ahead. They're claiming that the highest cases are, are, are coming from uh, people that are in school. And I'm like, I don't know about uh, your area, but if there's no school over here. In LA, how, how, how did the cases like double and triple quadruple, you know, for, for cases in school when, you know, everybody's going to school on Zoom. <laughs> Well, what's yeah, happening Danny's is school is now closed for entirely distance learning and they had to close everything else. But it, it took a while for that to happen. But they were closing for two weeks then not closing then two. You know, so the schools have had every day they have to email you saying, you know, from this school, there's so many cases, this school, so many cases and whether or not there was any contact tracing involved with you or your children. Today, the New York Times put out a, a tool for you to use to basically guesstimate where you'll line up to get the vaccine so it says how old are you which county do you live in do you work in any of these following professions so are you a healthcare worker or essential worker a first responder or a teacher and do you have any covid related health risks are you obese are you do you have cancer heart disease any other things like that when you submit it it goes ahead and it pulls up the list so for me it says i'm in line behind 23 million people to get uh, the vaccine based on my risk profile. When it comes to Connecticut, I'm 260,700th in line. Ugh. When it comes to my county, I'm 69,600 in line. I'll see you guys in July. Essentially. So it shows if you were this person, you know, you get to see where I fall in. And with me having certain health risks, uh, besides the weight, I would fall in right after first responders. So it goes healthcare workers, nursing homes compromised first responders and then health risks right like like i and i think the sicker you are or the more at risk you are the more you do want it right because yeah. then you go other elderly then the rest of the essential workers then teachers and then you go through homeless prisoners young adults and children those are all on the bottom of the other list so hey what up to joe compton salute the soldier in the chat baby still working uh overseas um, but anyway, yeah, we'll get back to wrestling, but it's very interesting to talk about um, with you guys. I know that everybody has different feelings about it. Some people, you know, the government control, it's really all true to me. Um, but I just don't think we have enough science on all of it to, to 100% know. But at the same point, you know, I, I don't know, man. I haven't had the flu vaccine in six months, but, you know, it's like, you know, Leah was telling me H1N1 is kind of climbing up a little bit over there. And so, like, all my kids got the flu shot a couple months ago, a month ago, because you have to have the flu shot to go to school. So they all had the flu shot, but the H1N1 shot is in the flu shot. So, and flu and H1N1 kind of kills the kids, you know, more than anything. But it doesn't really kill anybody right now because the H1N1 is at 0.009% of death mortality. Like, right now, like right now it's lower than that. So... H1N1 is nowhere, it's like lower than COVID, you know, that you would die. And it's, and there's, and, and millions more got it. Like, like hundreds of millions of people got H1N1. And that is down at like the zero, zero point, you know, it's a way, the like crazy low. Yeah, almost non existent. Yeah. Not quite, but almost. If you had 10,000 people with COVID, you know what I mean? Like 300 are going to die. Speaking of vaccines, they actually had a couple cases of polio start popping back up. Well, that's because <laughs> that's because people don't get vaccinated because they're stupid. Yeah. So polio is something you should get vaccinated for because it's a known proven vaccination. There's no fluctuation. It doesn't change. You don't you don't get a polio shot and then need another polio shot in a year. 
Like, it's like, dude, you get the fucking thing once. Maybe you get it a second time in like 15 years or something, they say. 20 years. I don't know. But it's like you get it once. That pretty much does it. So if you... It's not like the flu where you can get the flu shot and you might not get the right one and then you still get the flu because there's so many different flus that you're just kind of guessing at the at the top flu when you get the flu shot. Then you need it again in a year or six months. So I could see people saying, I'm not going to get the flu shot because my immune system, I'll just do what it does. I don't care. That's fine. But the polio, I mean, and shit like that, you know, like why wouldn't you... Why the fuck wouldn't you get that shot? You don't your measles and that shit like well that you'll get that then and you'll that that can come back and you could die of it. Why well, you don't want to die of that? That's an easy one to get. But some vaccines are 100% like probably need you should get it. But other ones are like senseless. To stab yourself every 6 months with a flu shot is retarded. Like your body's never even going to be able to fight a disease then or fight the flu. You know, you want your you want when you're healthy, you want your body to actually fight things. You, when you're healthy that way when you get sick someday your body is built up all these you know it kills it right away so your body doesn't even have to go into fighting it but if you get a bunch of vaccines then you're like 60 and you don't have a vaccine for like five years then you get sick you might die because your body's like i don't know what the fuck to do you know I yeah, didn't, exactly i didn't get that practice but vaccines are also good so that's where the truth lies in the middle and there's so many people that are like fuck all vaccines or i love them all i'm gonna take everything they tell me you know, it's like, dude, the truth is in the middle somewhere. You know, do a lot of, you need to do your own research and do a lot of it. And, you know, that's, it's just, unfortunately, nobody wants to do that. None of us do. We're all so fucking hyperactive. But let's go back to, speaking of COVID and the crowds, you, you said it. How nice was it to see some of that cheering for Sting last night? If there had been nobody there last night. There was such elation. I mean, there was one fan I could see in my mind replay over and over. He was that excited that he was like just shaking and freaking out and I could still see his movements, you know, just, just that type of raw energy and the, the thought that it wasn't spoiled beforehand, having that crowd, I think that's what made it so extra special. And especially because we missed it with Matt Hardy, we didn't, and we haven't had any type of ovation or, or raucous, you know, applause in a long, long time. At least it feels that way. So to get that type of reaction uh, was, was next level awesome. And I think one of the uh, major differences too, like, um, you know, in comparison to a guy like Matt Hardy is that we kind of already knew that he was on the outs in WWE before he left right. and eventually went to AEW, just like a lot of the guys who, you know, uh, was uh, released, um, you know, back when they released a, a bunch of talent or whatever. So you kind of like, if they show up like a month later, you kind of know like already like, well, okay, they most likely they're either going to go to AEW or impact because you don't have that many choices. This was like random and out of the blue. So, I mean, that, plays a big role into why it was such a a shock and a surprise you know for for the audience you know what i mean because you can kind of usually see it coming when a major star is gonna um, jump ship or go to a company like AEW. yeah it's 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 true like we really saw it coming but and you can see how unhappy he was he was just misused um you really felt like he was moving over um that being said you know we talked about the ratings everything was good there we got uh, Heroes of Lucha Libre coming up on Crackle. Um, now, that's already available now, Famous B. One last thing before we move on. That's available now on Crackle, right? That is correct. Yeah, it came season. out November 23rd, right? 24th, yeah. Yeah, 24th. wow. Okay. that's So we can all go watch that later. So that's really cool. Shout out to Crackle. If you got anybody, Famous B, that ever wants to plug that or come on, you want to plug that more, or you want to tell the company, tell Conan, whoever... I did talk to Conan, but it was weeks ago, and I, I haven't gotten back. We haven't got back to each other yet. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to do something with that. That And now let's move on to um, War Games. Let's get this War Games card going. Uh, yeah. Um, really quick, just to wrap up AEW. Uh, yeah. This week, it, you know, they, they kind of laid it on thick with the inner circle. I like that story. And since Chris Jericho didn't see MJF with the towel... And he saw Sammy Guevara with the towel. He then threatened that he was going to break up the inner circle unless everyone got along. Uh, some of the discussion going on, and I agree, we kind of talked about an idea of this a few weeks back, as I really like Sammy Guevara as a babyface. According to Meltzer, this, this is kind of where they're going. They're not going to break up the inner circle. They're going to use this as a chance to turn Sammy face. And I think that's a great idea because he, he really is very popular with his you know, subsect of fans. He proved that he can wrestle as a babyface a few weeks back, 
against MJF and Wardlow. That was a great match for him, really good showing. And I think it, it's a bit of an interesting tale to tell because he he works well in the inner circle, but now that they have more members, I don't want him to fall to the wayside and be forgotten about. So I think a, a bit of change of pace for him would be great. Oh, man, time. that's too bad, too, because I like him in the inner circle. and, and I really like him, too, but I he's very charismatic. I like his vlogs. I've been watching them for <clears throat> a long time now, and... He's just entertaining. He's so a little I, douchey, I but I he, he's a little douchey, but I like it. And plus, yeah. anybody who will go a, that, anybody that. anybody who will go on um, Kevin's show and say that they want to rape Sasha. I mean, like let's let's be honest. <laughs> like this guy's a friend of the show. Okay, exactly. He he's pretty damn real in that sense. <laughs> He, he still don't, gets himself in trouble every don't now and say again, you're gonna so. don't do that to women people like don't oh, really do that. it's a joke but, but like, you knew he was it. joking obviously no i know but, but let's you know i agree i love it but don't yeah don't really don't really want to do that of course no especially uh, when your daughter oh, watching eric bischoff said that AEW over delivered with the sting debut whoa and uh, you know he's very excited about everything going forward so you know he, he gave them I, I first took it as kind of a negative but no he's saying that they they went above and beyond well so we'll i believe that out. i agree i know i think you're right i think they over delivered but that the over delivery made it perfect you know what i mean it should be over it's fucking sting it should be over delivered so this is beautiful exactly and we're really going to find out next week with the results dude i have become and i know you have too one of the biggest things the most exciting things about AEW launching has been these predictions and in, it, it, like guessing the ratings has become one of my favorite things to do. Uh, super dorky, super nerdy. And, you know, with us guessing pretty close this week with 900,000 and 920,000 and it being 913,000, you know, next week with me thinking it's maybe 1,100,000 something, you thinking it's 1 million even almost, um, what is Sting going to deliver on? Because. This is the night where, okay, people missed the show live, but they went and watched YouTube later. Hey, I only watch WWE. I don't watch anything else. Or, hey, I used to watch WCW, but once they went out of business, I really stopped watching her. I used to be a TNT guy or TNA guy. You know, all those people. Is it going to be a former watcher of wrestling? All these different people that could dive in and show up next week. What is that number? Is the number for Sting, is it going to stay the same? Is it just going to be 900,000 watch again next week? Is it going to go down back to the regular 800,000 number? Is it going to go up? How much is it going to go up? Me and you both believe it's going to go up slightly. Um, will it go up more? You know what I mean? Like, wh what if next week they draw 1.3? Or Yeah, what if they do something Good amazing? God, what if they do 1.25, 1.4? What if they wow. do a 1.5 and they come close to Raw? Like, what if that happens? I could only hope. You know what that would do to Vince McMahon? Oh my that god. That would have to shatter his foundation somehow, some way, some shape, some form. That would piss them off. You if know they beat Raw. To. Now, I don't believe that's possible. I believe if they if they over doubled NXT's numbers next week, they would have to consider moving NXT to another night. I don't think they would cuz I think they they're still happy with taking that chunk. That's almost like a suicide mission for them to to go up against, you know, and be it losing is. that much. It is. I they, know that I know they're happy with trying to take viewers away, but as they say, this ain't it, Chief. It's not working. So, yeah, they're they're holding on to their six hundred and fifty thousand viewers. NXT is. I'd love to see both of them doing over a million. You know, I want to see these wrestling businesses succeed, but they'd have to move Raw on Wednesdays. Wednesday yeah. night Raw. <laughs> Wednesday night Raw to go head to head with, or they could move SmackDown. That'd be their best bet. Yeah, that'd be funny. Wednesday night SmackDown going up against. And yeah, because then SmackDown would probably produce 1.9 to 2.3 million, and they would start beating. They would beat AEW probably. So that would yeah, that would be their only uh, their only real shot at it. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. Gotta get <laughs> We hung the tree it's up Christmas earlier. Time, it's Christmas time. It's a Christmas song. It's Christmas. Sorry to all the Muslims watching. I know you don't give a shit, but. <laughs> Sorry, Awandi. Sorry, Awandi. <laughs> Oh, 
It's Christmas time. Was there any truth to that whole WCW reboot memo from yesterday? How the hell is that gonna be a thing when WWE has all their damn titles? Super Jack. I don't think there Super was. Jack. I don't know what that was. The social score is almost here. Get ready. Yeah, the social score is almost here, Drew Bar. Um, no one wants a social score. But ag aggressive March. Urinator JD, thank you, uh, Aggressive Urinator, for the 1225. And Drew Bar, thank you. Uh, they covered that in both both shows. What were the two shows that covered the social score? They're great episodes. Great episodes. One of them is, I think, Dark Mirror, maybe? And Black Mirror? Black Mirror. And then the other one was on the Star Trek show... Uh, the Orville. The Orville covered the social score. One of the crew members, the Orville's like Star Trek The Next Generation, but with a little bit of comedy. It's what Star Trek really should be instead of whatever Star Trek is now. And the guy like yeah. the guy got drunk in public. And then like it the it, the video of him getting drunk in public went viral. And then people started going on his thing and, and giving him negative thumbs downs. And on his body on his like body is he like a badge and on his phone and like his numbers started going down and down and down. And when you reach a certain amount of down votes, they put you on trial. And then when you reach a certain amount of down votes, they kill you or lobotomize you. So that was an unbelievable episode of the Orville. And then like right around that same time, China implemented their social score. So I think it's, yeah, it's something Dark Mirror, Black Mirror and the Orville. Both shows had the same episode around the same time within a couple weeks of each other both shows had an episode revolving around um uh social score i i would say the black mirror episode is way more dark the orville is a nice Found like it. yeah the orville is a very like you can watch the orville one and you're like wow we better be careful with that but if you watch the black mirror one it's like holy shit um but yeah anyway i'm sorry uh let's go back to what we were <laughs> We got to get to war games eventually. Yes, get into war games. So I think that was the oh Eddie Kingston. Why was he shouting at the end of AEW Dynamite? Ah. So we weren't exactly sure. Uh, you thought it was partially intentional. I was kind of convinced that it was a not a botch, but it was supposed because they were going right into taping next week's episode. We had heard they had audio turned on. They shouldn't have had turned on. Basically, well, apparently that wasn't it. Um, Kingston was basically there in case the. Omega match ended early or went and they had a lot of time left over. Ah. They weren't sure. So they were going to throw in Eddie Kingston and Lance Archer. So he was supposed to call out Lance Archer then and there. And that would fill the rest of TV time if they had X amount of time left. Luckily, it all played out. But that was just a, a you know, be prepared in case something happens. But I guess Kingston was so worked up that he was just he called them out anyways. <laughs> <laughs> He was I know we up. got Kingston 30 seconds still left. To fight. So I know that, we got 30 seconds left to the broadcast, but I'm gonna call him out anyway. I want to fight. I want a match right now. Yeah, they, they say here that's why this is coming from Wrestling Observer. They say that's why uh, you know th that match was an alternate if needed, and you know Kingston still wanted to fight Lance, so he demanded to wrestle him on the spot. But it will be turned into an angle some for next week's triple threat or not triple threat uh, three way six man tag. So two teams of three. They're going to have that match, so that'll work out. So at least we'll we'll still see, you know, Eddie, uh, the Butcher and Blade in action on one side. You know, next week sounds like it'll be a hell of a show, not just because of the Sting, you know, explanation either. They should and... start the program with the finish of that match, like they've been fighting all week. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> they never stopped. <laughs> WWE says they're planning on going crazy live, you know, when, when they can have a, a full audience. They want to go full tilt. Triple H has been talking, and during his media conferences for uh, War Games, he said, you know, when when they finally do have the ability to get fans back in the building, he's hoping it's early 2021. He said, and that's looking at it selfishly. He said, packed arenas, packed houses, loud live crowds. That's what we do. They are the WWE. Those fans, those people, their voices, their passion. That's what we do it for. It's barren without them. And he's so right. And he says that the first time we can go back to a full audience, we're going to go full tilt on crazy. So wow. he has plans that he's been saving for the next time they can have a full audience. So that's pretty cool. Which, um, what... 
I not I don't want to go back to the COVID stuff because everybody wants to not think about that. But realistically, if there's vaccine talk right now, it's coming out in the UK. They're already putting it out in India. Um, realistically, we can really assume that I think that once this darkness is over, this wave of and by the way, we are about to be in some let's be honest, some bad times in the next couple months. It's going to get ugly. Um for our healthcare workers. Um, once we come out of February, so I would think by March, April, March and April time is when things should start calming down, I would think. And then more vaccines are rolling out. And so can we try to assume maybe that the, that the fans might start to return a little bit by June and July? And, and by the way, it looks like WrestleMania is compromised because of what we're about to go through and, and when the vaccines yeah. will roll out. Last we heard that WrestleMania 37 will be happening in Florida. So they do it, you know, they're, they're, it, it, everything's Man. up in the air still, though. Nothing's we don't definite. know anything. Yeah, we, we, again, we don't. They could be in the don't. performance center again. They could do it in a Thunderdome setting. They could do it with small fans. We, we don't you know. know what my but... goal is? My goal, my goal in my head was I hope that you know, and we're being selfish, of course, but, you know, I'm being first world problem selfish. Somebody's missing a family member right now. But I'm hoping that next yeah. year when I go Christmas tree shopping that, you know, everybody's not social distancing and wearing masks. But, I mean, you should just be happy to be out there even shopping for a tree, right? Because yeah, at least you can still go out and, you know, you only have to wear the mask. At least you still have that that chance but i mean while we're talking about COVID again really quick uh that was part of the issue for survivor series this year wow. as much as they didn't want nxt to be involved if they were just going to lose you know they didn't want to showcase them in a negative light they also didn't want to mix and mingle the different brands if they didn't have to as where raw and smackdown kind of intermingle already and they're, they're mixed up they didn't want to mix the performance center with the amway center if they didn't have to right so that was an big push for them not to involve NXT and Survivor Series. And Triple H also said during these media calls that WWE is absolutely open to crossovers. Guys, we've been about other companies this whole time. What are you talking about? <laughs> so he, after, of course, the impact news on AEW, yeah, they, well, Triple H is open for business. Direct quote, we're open to the right opportunities at any given time, but they have to be beneficial for us in the long term. He's not wrong. So, They've worked with what pwg they've worked with the uk companies they've worked with well they bought evolve they worked with evolve for five years and then bought them so is that what he means maybe he means uh, that because he's not wrong in that way yeah i mean they famously you know worked with ecw back in the day it says here we've seen them with progress evolve wxw but nothing as much of a crossover like you know they consumed wcw so that wasn't working with some people are pointing that out and no they they bought them out that's not the same as working with another company right um but i mean it could be interesting if that's did the i case. say pwg i'm thinking of famous b <laughs> i'm sorry yeah they did not i don't they know, know they signed a lot of pwg talent so progress i, I got what you meant yeah progress a lot of pe a lot of people came from pwg but they didn't work with them you're right <laughs> i think i meant progress the, the, a lot of UK companies. Remember Triple H showed yeah. up over over there. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, but, um, so, so I, I do believe that they are open to working with people. But it, uh -huh. as we're, what is what does AEW get out of their immediate, you know, actions with Impact? Not a lot. Impact's viewership already went up this week initially before yep. this. You know, next week it's going to be a huge increase for them, or at least interest in their product as we keep saying you know they're they're cockroaches that just won't die i think they're just and using somehow them, dna finds a way they're using them for a storyline i think it works because of that i don't think they could have gotten the same result any other way you know what i mean in a way I, I don't think but i it is a little weird but i just think that they're using it for a storyline and they don't care because impact is so small that you know they're not they're not going to lose fans to impact exactly and they're they're not they're not only not going to lose fans, but they will gain something out of this. It won't be as much as what Impact gains, but that would be WWE's mindset. They would have to gain more out of a working relationship, no uh, doubt about it. Right. Triple H has done a Triple H has done a phenomenal job. By the way, people talk about bashing Triple. Uh, we've never bashed him. We've always talked how well he's done. 
Um, that NXT crew that they have is phenomenal. They're great. They're really solid. They have a just working thing. They're just missing this sort of outside element of excitement that AEW has, but they don't have the production value and the, and the resources that AEW has, but maybe they do because they're WWE, so maybe that's wrong, but they just don't they have They might this. have the financial backing, but they may not have the the same resources. Right. You know, the same connections. And they're not They don't have Vince's blessing. That's what they don't have. Yeah, well, and Vince is always ruining their characters. That's killer. Right there. Vince is like look at Alistair Black, dude. Where the fuck is Alistair Black? Yeah, th- like I said before, that th- we've discussed this over and over, but it's yeah. such a shame because they have something great with him and they're just not using it. Uh, Triple H was at Raw this week. This is what Daryl Stoltz brought up before, and I, I wanted to bring it up. Seth Negan, you know, and uh, a few other people had said it too, but on Twitter, uh, Triple H being at this week's Raw was apparently a breath of fresh air. The stars were much more relaxed, comfortable, and there's a uh, kind of a, a, a a feeling going around that Bruce Pritchard's word, Pritchard's word has been just viewed as gospel. If Vince isn't there, Bruce has worked himself into that second in command, and where he used to where lot, he used to be. Uh, yeah, but now he has even more, I guess, power and say so than he did previously. Well, and he's terribly, terribly unpopular. That's in quotes with WWE talent. Jesus. Um, this is coming from PW Mania, and I have a few other articles pulled up as well. This one's from uh, the Sportster.com. But, you know, it says everyone in that position has to be a bit of a bullshit artist. But the issue with Pritchard has to do ha- with how he openly plays games with people's lives and livelihood. And we've, we've heard this before. Yep. He said he will set up talent, and then he stooges off a story to Vince designed to push an agenda. So he'll do this by either pushing people he wants to see elevated in the company or burying other talents he wants to bury for no reason. Uh, yep. Apparently, a lot of stars in the back are very frustrated with him on the Raw and SmackDown side of things. So. Very similar to how Vince is a sicko and likes to push people into a pool. Uh, Bruce Prichard is like that behind the scenes. Per uh, Wrestling I mean, News here, this is, this is the third site, WrestlingNews.co says that we have heard from wrestlers frustrated with their lack of TV time. With so many people on the main roster, they aren't going to find time for everyone. And the stars understand that, but there are people that haven't been featured in weeks or months that came out of a role that was you know, supposed to go ahead and you know, elevate them or at least bring them to a, a better place than where they were. And it also happens, you know, people are expressing frustration in general for hiring so many people just to stack their roster and keep them from going elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, that's that's classic them. You know, just, just classic shit. And here, to go back to the Bruce thing, you know, Bruce was always cruising along just like this in WWE with Vince up until Vince Russo and those guys and the Attitude Era hit. Because remember, they were a sinking ship with Bruce Prichard and Vince in 1995, right? So think about that. WWE is a sinking ship in 1995 until Vince McMahon decides, let's do the crazy thing and let's let's go Attitude Era. And then who who becomes Vince's top guys? You know, Jim Cornette, Vince Russo, JR kind of move up. And Ed Bru- Ferrara. Ed Ferrara, yeah. And we, yep. Ed, poor Ed always gets forgotten. Ed Ferrara, forgotten Ferrara. And um, then, you know, Bruce Pritchard got pushed down a little bit, but he still had a solid position in the company. But when Vince started empowering his kids, especially Stephanie, and then bringing in Paul Heyman and stuff like that, they all started butting heads with Bruce Pritchard. And then Stephanie didn't like Bruce Pritchard. So then they, they, you know, she started, the daughter of the owner started butting heads with Bruce Pritchard about power. And that's power. not alleged. That's, that's been that, documented 100% fact. Well. And this is over creative, right? But now... Stephanie isn't really in that creative thing anymore. Stephanie enjoys the press and the 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 working with disabilities and the and the, the PR work, side, the of PR things. stuff exactly. The so she's all she's focused on that, like the look of WWE, the PR, the marketing, the the like how great we are and, and the sales and stuff like that. So she's moved away from that creative open and so and Shane a little bit has always been. A pushover, so Bruce Pritchard is able to come back in. There's no Russo, there's no Cornette, there's no Jim Ross, there's no Patterson, there's no and rest in peace, he's dead now. And there's no uh, Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon struggling with him over power of the company. There's Triple H, but Triple H is down running NXT, 
and 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 Road Dog was sent down to NXT, and IRS Rotunda he's gone, and so many are gone. Bruce so Pritchard, many are gone that put in a long time. Right, uh, so they're, so they're one guy Bruce the, the, is back as the number one guy with Vince from 1995 yeah. again. He, That's my point. Was supposed to be along with Heyman and uh, Bischoff, which you know Bischoff got fired, and you know Heyman didn't last long. So how ironic. Right. Uh, do you happen to know famous be the name Kevin Quinn when it comes to WWE? I know Qu- Kevin Quinn, the referee. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, uh, Kevin Quinn here was the VP of TV technology, and he worked for them for over 35 years. Because of COVID, he was let go. The other day, I just happened to be on Reddit, and I, the top post of the day was for, on Squared Circle was a, uh, this guy's child went ahead and said, my dad worked for WWE for 35 years and basically got shit-canned can you give him a couple of thanks? It's probably a lot of the stuff you've enjoyed over the years. Right. He's had his hands directly involved in. And everybody begged him to do an AMA, and he did one the next day. He answered a lot of questions. A lot of people tried to get him to crap on Kevin Dunn and Vince. Didn't happen. He was very, very polite and respectful. Uh-huh. But this AMA had a lot of gold nuggets in it of you know little bits of information. And he said that one of the things that he posted and then deleted right away was how the uh the saudi plane incident that we always hear about he said yeah. it was a lot scarier for the wrestlers over there and just when he was starting to tell more that comment went away so you know it makes you wonder what really happened at that time and you know you, you always heard rumors that oh the military was involved and things like that so that might have actually been the truth but uh the, one of my favorite things from the attitude era he took part in creating which was the three faces of Foley when you saw dude, love cactus, Jack and mankind all interact with each other on the same, uh, you know, promo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That's one of my favorites. You know, when you actually see them all interacting and talking to each other, that yeah, was yeah. one of the things he was directly involved in. And he so, did it with, you know, ba- he did it with the basic tricks, but they're really complicated without nowadays you could have just green screened everybody in a certain way. Exactly. They didn't have, it's, it's they, so they had much, green screen you know, then, easier. but I mean, yeah, the way he did it, very interesting. So yeah, shout out to him, man. And, and similar to him is, you know, obviously more recognizable to people because he's a referee is, is Mike Kyoto. And Mike Kyoto said, even though he's upset, he's like, I would have thought after all these years that they would have put me somewhere where I could retire with the company somehow or, or, or whatever. Yeah. And they just let me go. And that's it. And he, as much as he says that, you know, I, I give, I went to Vince's kids weddings, you know, he's, he says that he's got nothing but respect and all that. He said, what's the one thing that you can suggest for the company to do now? And he jokingly says, you know, rehire me. And that was, you can tell he loved working there. And yeah, he said, is there anything you'd change about today's production? He says, yes, rehire Kevin Quinn. Ha ha. But, you know, to Uh, to be honest, to be honest, to go back, that does happen in every company. It's not just a WWE thing. You know, I mean, like we, we, but I'm saying we always try to make WWE so evil. But I mean, I worked at a company for almost five years and you guys know I got let go in 2017 um, you know, I miss all those people. I went to the, some of those people's parties. We all hung out like we were friends. And the next thing you know, I'm let go and I, that's it. It's over. And it's like, what, what the hell? Like, why did this happen? And it's the same thing. You don't, you can't really, it's, you feel the same way. Now I don't compare that with Kyoto. Kyoto is somebody who should have retired with this guy too. They all should have retired with the company if they could, but it is true that in companies, sometimes you just get axed and suddenly it hits you like, this was my yeah, life. This I mean, was my. It certainly sucks that you know you're, you're your cut loyalty. off from you're, you're cut off from your family essentially. Yeah, because this that's everything to you. You that you've spent more time with them than your family. You know, he's talking about minimum sixty hour work weeks, and a lot of the stuff was from the technical side of things. He actually posted a video on how they do things in the production truck for like a WrestleMania. That was a great watch. The the aspect in which I'm very curious of on the production side of things, he shed a light on that we don't really get to see much. So it was it's, it's definitely a great read if you guys want to check it out. And he said like the 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 biggest hurdle or transition from them was not standard def to high def. HD was not that difficult. Going from mono audio to stereo was the biggest challenge for them. They actually didn't have a stereo receiver for years, so they had to build their own two channel receiver by putting two mono receivers side by side and like mickey fitting it to work over the air wow they you know he came up with all these workarounds to actually get them to broadcast in stereo from mono so a lot a lot of crazy stuff uh but definitely worth checking out um in the chat when you come up with something like that you should like 
maybe patent it or something yeah. like that. So <laughs> if you, if you're fired, that shit goes. That trick goes with me. You can't do that. Yeah, shit. <laughs> it just seemed like he was very good at what he did. By the way, you know the descriptions he fed. But yeah, you fire me, you go back to sounding like shit. It just WWE has not had the best year with COVID, letting people go in a pandemic. Even Tony Khan said that, you know, we need to let people go, but we haven't yet so far and we're not going to anytime soon. Where are people going to be able to work? Where are people, you know, there is no other option for them at this point in time, really. And I respect that. So that's why they're really working on not hiring many more people at AEW they've, they've talked about, but they do want, I mean, Sting's an obvious, and that was months ago, but they're they're trying eventually they want to thin the roster out a bit so you will see layoffs but i i don't know when it, it'll be when the, the pandemic slows or ends yeah my thing is this like going back to wwe how many people are they laying off in a corporate office you know like uh, uh that's quite what, a bit quite a, quite a few we've know. heard so i i don't have the stats in front of me but i know we've discussed it previously and they let go quite a few employees in the corporate side of things too so Right, yeah, a right. lot of people were furloughed too, and so there are some people coming back, but apparently these guys are not. Yeah, these are guys not are them. Just gone. Which we wondered about, but now with their dis- displeasure, it sh- it kind of tells you that they it looks like they're done, you know. But um, we got to get into war games. We're way past time. But yes, uh, yes. So, uh, war games only has five matches. We've got starting right up. Dexter Loomis is taking on Cameron Grimes in a strap match. This is the only one I'm not looking forward to. I wasn't, I like their Halloween Havoc match that they had because it was outlandish and weird, but it was like in its own little universe. I wish they didn't come back to the arena, but it still, it worked for what it was, but them continuing this feud with the blindfold match and every, it, it's just not working for me. I'm going to pick Dexter Loomis, but I don't give a damn about this, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I do kind of care because I like the, Dexter Loomis. Just reminds me of like Stone Cold a little bit, and so like I'm kind of like interested in him in a way. He's like playing this sort of like more that serial killer gimmick. I like with him not talking and being such a he's more like know, intense individual. But remember how Stone Cold said he was like a serial killer, but De- yeah. Dexter Loomis is more like the literal version of it. Like he's acting like he's butchering people or something. Whereas, like, Stone Cold was more, like, psychology serial killer. So, you know, I mean, nothing will ever be Stone Cold, but, I mean, the guy just looks like yeah, like he's a got that sick, look. you know, uh, yeah, he just looks like a racist. So, it's great. <laughs> so, Dexter Loomis, <laughs> really, <laughs> really enjoy him. Um, you know, so th- this could be pretty good, or it could be terrible. I mean, we'll see. Flip a coin. I'm going with... I don't uh, think it'll be bad, but... I, I got to give the win to Dexter Loomis. I mean, Cameron Grimes... If Dexter Loomis loses, I mean, what the hell is the point of this scary thing he's doing? And then he loses to Grimes? Yeah. I mean, that it, doesn't... It wouldn't make much sense at all. Famous B, what do you think? I agree. I mean, they're just uh, throwing Grimes out there uh, to do the job. And, uh, you know, they're just using him as a whipping stick uh, for Dexter to, you know, unleash on. So, yeah, I'm going Dexter all the way. Even though I don't know much about him. You know, I'm pretty sure that they're they're pushing this guy, and we haven't seen them do much with Cameron anyway. Yeah, he's. I like Cameron to a certain extent. I mean, he could be silly, and some of the things are enjoyable, but some of it's too over the top for me. So it's been hit or miss. Uh, next up, we have Tommaso Ciampa taking on Timothy Thatcher. So Thatch's Thatch can has been pretty, uh, you know, enjoyable for the most part. Those are another ones that can be hit or miss. They're never awful, but some have obviously been better than the others. Kind of like the Firefly Funhouse. And, you know, Thatcher's just a bully. And I, I, as much as it would be a huge win for him here, I think Tommaso Ciampa is hurt more in a loss here. I think they're they're building him back up for probably the, the main event scene at least one more time, it feels like. I know we'll, we'll eventually get uh, Cross versus Balor. And then after that, I could see Ciampa filling that role, you know, since he has unfinished business with Cross. So I think Ciampa wins here. Tommaso yeah. Champa. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're going with Champa. I would huh? go with Champa too. Uh oh. Timothy Timothy Thatcher, uh really good friend of mine. You know, I know him from way back, uh Northern California uh native. Um, you know, travel up and down a road with him plenty of times. Timothy Ch- Thatcher is definitely a good talent. But um, yeah, I gotta give the edge to Tommaso here. Yeah, I'm going to go Tommaso as well because they think they need to rebuild his thing up, and I think that's what they're going to do finally. I think before they used him as, 
you know, his credibility to help other people out. But now I think that they may, you know, start running with him at some point. So, I, yeah, I think they're going to build him back up again, make him a heel again like he was. I can see that. I mean, I can see people also arguing, like Pocket Ace is saying, that Thatcher needs to win more. I don't I don't dispute that. But right. for me, I think story-wise, uh, you know, I, I think what they want to do with Champa, at least seemingly what they want to do, I think that lines up better for him getting a victory. But yeah, I mean, I it, think this will be a really good match. If Thatcher were to win, it would be one of those things like, oh, my God, Thatcher just beat the former NXT champion. And, and so it would be a launching point in a way for Thatcher, but. I would only want them to do, do that it. if they actually have a solid plan for Thatcher going yeah, forward. Yeah, and I don't see that yet either. So No, I think it's still not this time is, for him to move up. But him, You can have Thatcher going for you know, the North American title at some point, and I think that would better service him. Yeah, yeah no, right I, now he's just getting a rub by being in a ring mm-hmm. with him. Exactly, yeah, the credibility. and It doesn't matter if he loses, it's going to be a good match that shows he can hang or whatever. So That's one of the things I, I was thinking earlier is that of all the people to face – it's very, very, very difficult to look good even in defeat. Right. And there's a few people that can really make you look like a million bucks. Balor can be one. You know, he made Kyle O'Reilly look fantastic. And uh, Adam Cole is certainly another one. But Champa's really good at putting people over while still looking strong. Yes. And I, I think Thatcher will look really good here, but Champa wins. I think that's what they're going to go for. Yeah, I re- yep. I think I think in the Gargano match, unfortunately, not to slight Gargano because he's great, but um, you could have moved somebody else into that, and it would have elevated them with Champa. But without Champa, Gargano wouldn't have been elevated. I don't think. Yeah, no, you need a DIY for Gargano to be in that main event scene. They they were you know very simpatico. They needed each other. That that's for sure. And speaking of Gargano, we have Leon Ruff, the current NXT North American champion defending his title in a triple threat match against Gargano and Damian Priest. So, you know, they had the whole story leading up to Halloween Havoc that Gargano hates wheels. He spins the wheel. He's got to have the match against Damian Priest. He wins the title with help from Ghostface there. But we find out later was supposed to be Indy Hartwell, but they kind of never really they they did unmask her, but they had more ghost face people this week, so we don't really know who the mm-hmm. other two are. But Leon Ruff ends up winning the belt. You know, the wheel screws Johnny over, the rigged wheel, and that that's, you know, he, now he no longer loves wheels. It, it's been a <laughs> decent story with Damian Priest, uh, you know, kind of being by the wayside. He loses his belt, but now he's trying to make Johnny's life a living hell. But Leon Ruff doesn't need to continue with the belt in my eyes. Yeah. It was like a, a short little pet project. It made him look good. He got he you know, he won the first time, he gets the belt, and then he's able to defend it. Yes, there's interference both times or a distraction. You know, there, there's some type of uh you know, excuse. But even still, Leon losing here, he can still say I was a former NXT North American champion and that can send him right to like the cruiserweight title next and build him up as a more known entity. Is this just pin I, to win? Pin that's it? Pin for the win? Yeah, just just normal triple threat. So I think Damian Priest is gonna win here and reclaim his title belt. Yeah, okay. Uh I'll s I, I think the same thing. I think a lot of people thought Gargano's getting it back. That so that that could be uh, they could go either way with this too. This is definitely a get out of jail card in a way. Yeah, because we don't know who who the masked individual, you know, the ghost face again with Johnny is as he had backup this past week. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's it's that's kind of the what if scenario. You know, we we could see is it new people debuting? Is it you know because NXT still signed a few more wrestlers, so that's a possibility. I mean, there, there's options here. Mm-hmm. I can just see them trying to cheat and then. Uh, one of three options. Leon Ruff could retain by Johnny and Damian beating the hell out of each other, and he just happens to get the quick pin. But I don't think that tells the best story. No, see, here's the thing. I think they took the belt off Priest so they could tell that story with Gargano that night. And so now they got to get the belt back to Priest because they did their job with that. Now they can get the belt back to Priest the way it was supposed to be. They told that story that night, cool, and then they got this guy to be um, rough to be this to get the rub here a little bit and get some credibility. So they nailed all these things with one shot. The only person who kind of looks bad though now, if if it goes back to Priest, is of course Gargano because he you know he won it that night and now he loses it again and now he can't win it back again. So like that, he does come off looking rough, but he's already such a made name that it doesn't matter. So he can go on to the next thing and whatever. Yeah, so, him being made, he's <clears> one of the pillars as we were saying, you know, of NXT and and that 
phrase holds strong here. So All right. Austin Theory could be one of the ghost face. I mean, there, there's a lot of possibilities, like TLWG Keith said. Uh, it, it, you know, they they left the door wide open, so at least we can get some surprise out of this too. Famous B, who are you going with? I also see Priest winning. Um, I don't see a reason to give it to Gargano whatsoever, but I can see Priest winning and them continuing the um, angle going forward and mm-hmm. having uh, Gargano chase. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm pretty much on board with Priest winning and them continuing that storyline because I I, I I don't see the uh, champ retaining at all because where do you go with him? Where, where do you go from there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and he's not going to feel with yeah. both. Both both individuals. So yeah, I think he, he drops the strap to Priest and then uh you know, Priest takes it and Gargano chases for a while. And Priest losing it was kind of a fluke with the interference thing and all that stuff anyway. So they told that story that night, they got that story, now they got this, get it back to him, okay, we're back the way we were. Um hundred yeah. percent think that's what happens too. Sounds sounds And by the way, uh, I think it's there's a like very the- big possibility this match starts the night. Now it could be the female war games. But I think it's going to go, I have no idea, but I think it's going to go this match starts the night, the the female war games then comes on, and then they go into Cameron Grimes, and then they go into the men, right? Or is there another match I'm forgetting about? Uh, if it's that's, two war games, they five. usually we got Chompa- put one to start. Usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah usually. I think the men will start. I think they're having the women be the main event. Oh, really? Yeah, because the men were the main event and the women opened last year. Yeah, see, I I know that normally they do the like they start with war games, they end with war games, so then everything else is in the middle. But I figured maybe they would do something different because, but I guess I guess then I guess what you could do is, Ruff and Priest and Gargano would be a good match to put in the middle of the show. Yeah, I yeah. think so, that that would be. Yeah, like, so maybe it's maybe it's war games, Grimes, this match, war games. Or is there one and other then, match? Well, Champa match would come before the last war games. Right. But what about I think that is there another match I'm missing? Nope, that's all five. Th- wait, what's the fifth one? Uh War Games, the, War Games, two, the two war games, Leon's NXT triple threat, the strap match and the singles match. Oh, where's the singles match? That's Thatcher and Champa. Oh right. Okay, so that's the one I missed though. So I left yeah, that one off. That's on. the one I'd put right before the main event. Okay, so what yeah. angle calls NXT? That's a good point. Yeah, what what ended NXT this week? Uh, was, I don't know. Um, I don't recall on the top of my head. I think it was the women's. Are you uh, sure it was the match? But really, man, I thought it was. Um, I thought it was the men that ended it. Might have been. Like I said, I'm not sure. I'm gonna check. But well, you better figure it out with that Spaz Phoenix geek you got talking to over there, doing the NXT reviews. He would know. No, but um, I think that. And the men have already kind of engaged in this. This is a big story. I would think the men are ending the show. So I really believe the women start. So I I would think women start and then strap match and then rough. Yeah, the women ended it. Women, Shotzi defeated Raquel Gonzalez to earn her team the advantage at Sunday's War Games match. So they ended with the women uh, Mm. at the end of NXT. I thought that was the case. So because they... Because the women main evented the NXT show, I bet you they're opening the show. Yeah. See, I, I still the other think way. the way they've built this, because this is, I think, bigger implications. I think the women's is going to main event, but you might be onto something. We'll you see. might be right. I mean, the women have been killing it with this, too. I mean, they've been killing it. Yeah, and since they don't have either a championship match or a women's championship match happening, you know, yeah. they've been pretty heavy with the, with the champion not being around. Mm-hmm. They've been putting the women as the forefront. You know, the women's title has kind of picked up the slack for where the main champion has been off the off the TV with the injury, you know, with Balor's jaw. And Io Shirai has really kind of carried things, so. Oh, man, that puts the – this is going to put the pressure on the women. <laughs> they got to kill it then. I mean, it's gonna. this is going to put a lot of pressure on them. A lot of matches are going to come before this. Man. Um, yeah, but I, I think they have because Shotzi has been all week saying she's got big plans and surprises in store for this match. And well, here we'll go right into it. So Team Shotzi, which is Shotzi, Ember Moon, Rhea Ripley, and Io Shirai, the women's champ, taking on Team Candice. So Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez, and Tony Storm. This is the second 
women's uh, war games match. The first was last year. And it's funny how some of the things switch. Like Candice was on the face team. This year she's on the heel team. Same thing with Dakota. And Io Shirai was on the heel team. This year she's on the face team. So it's kind of amusing to see that. I think the face team is walking away with the victory here. They are really pushing Shotzi Blackheart to be like the face of the women's division. They, they've got a lot behind her at this point. She's doing a lot of media, a lot of hosting. I think that they really have a, a big emphasis on her career going forward with NXT. And I also, you know, with, with her having the women's title on her side as well, I think that's going to play a part into it. Plus, they said they have some surprises, but I, I'm picking the faces for this one. Team Shotzi all the way. All right, boom. It's a good pick. And um, didn't they announce Ember Moon later as one of the, um, mis- like a, a mystery partner or something like that? She wasn't uh, she, originally on the team, right? If I'm not mistaken. I thought she was. I might be I might be off, but I thought she was on their team at this point initially. So. I thought I saw her announced uh, via social media, like Who? not recently, not Who too got long announced? ago. Ember, Ember Moon. Moon. Yeah, she's in the match. Ember Moon's in the women's match. Right, but she wasn't originally, right? No, she no, was yeah. Announced. Yeah, she, yeah, got she was added. announced later on. Yeah, she was. It yeah. was only only a couple of weeks ago, I think. Indy Hartwell right. still is running around with her, you know, neck brace on, even though it's a kayfabe injury, but Tony Storm essentially replaced her as well. So Right. So who do you think? Team Shotzi or Team Candace for both of you? Um Who's gonna win? I gotta go with the faces. I got to go with the Shotzi's team because they're pumping Shotzi up. And Io is the champion. And, and you know, Ember Moon's coming back. And then they got a bunch of stuff with uh, Rhea Ripley. So I got to go with the faces on this one. Yeah, Io was the last one announced. That was the most recent announcement. I don't know if Ember Moon wasn't originally on the team or not, though. I don't recall. So my, my memory right, sucks either. Anyways, unless I have it in front of me for notes. <laughs> We've been paying more attention to AEW, let's be honest, so. You know, that's really all <laughs> that that's true as well but um who do you think famous b man the bias the bias in me wants to go with candace you know my former pwg tag team partner but um i'm gonna go with uh, team shotzi as well i'm definitely gonna go with team shotzi um like you guys said she has the momentum and um yeah i just really don't see a reason to uh put the female heels over i really don't see a reason especially you know, like either to start or in a pay-per-view, you know what I mean? So I think they want to either start or leave on, uh, on a high note and continue, um, you know, the, the, the launch of Shotzi. Right. Yeah. It makes a good deal of sense. And it also kind of spoils my pick for the uh, final match, which is undisputed era. And these guys have been involved in every single NXT war games match. Since 2017, these these wow. guys have been in every single male war games match. I know this somebody is, will say not the women's, but yes, why this, that? This is their match. Every really. every male's match. This is their match, and this is their match to lose. I definitely think that they're losing this one. I know that sounds kind of crazy in in some aspects, but I I wait it out and keep going back and forth and. Oh, I can see Pat McAfee finding a way, yeah. some way. He's got a plan. He's got something up his sleeve. There's no way he'd agree just to go in and get his ass kicked. Like the he's he's been booked so far as as pretty cunning, and and he's got you know a good amount of wits about him. He's, Especially he's, if they go on first too, right? If they go on first, it's like oh yeah, that's the loss right that, there. Well, that's why I think this will open the show and the heels will win. Not only does this continue the story, but it also puts over the tag team champions. Because mm-hmm. Birch and Lorcan are the current tag champs, so that makes them look a bit stronger as well. As where I don't think Undisputed Era gains as much from beating Pat McAfee. That just kind of ends it. As where Pat winning here can keep things going. Right. And, I mean, they could they could do it to where, you know, there's a bunch of options. Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, you know, do end up being just the two faces on the team. And Strong and Fish, you know, are the heels on their own regard. Do they break up? Do they stay together? Do we have, like, two on two? You know, what does it lead to? There's a whole world of possibilities. But if they beat Pat now, I feel like that ends the feud. So they're going to want to continue this for a while. Pat's money, and especially if he finds a way to cheat to win, that would really, you know, want people even more to see him get his comeuppance. So I think there's money in Pat winning here. So Team Pat. All right. 
I, I agree. I think that the heels are going to take that one. So there you go. Yeah, the heels is for no other reason that they're the heels. <laughs> for no <laughs> other reasons, because otherwise I would have undisputed all day. But for no other reason that they're the heels, and I think that the um, you know, the baby faces in the women's war games match is gonna go over. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna pick the heels. Yeah, it seems that way. Have people be upset in the beginning if that opens, and then yeah, Pete Dunn's been gone for a while. That's a great point, Matt. So have Pete finally come back and look strong as well. That's good for him. I just see more of a justified reason to have the heels win here. Logically, have, that's that's what makes sense. Have Pat go over in his tuxedo uh, shorts. <laughs> yeah, I know. in a war games <laughs> match. I know when I say cheating, I mean you can't really get disqualified. But I could picture Pat having someone else ready to help their team. Yep. Or you know he's got in some tight planned. little shorts. He's gonna yeah, have, he's gonna I, have <laughs> his buddy Dan Lebitar. Tuxedo shorts. Dan Lebitar and Stephen A. Smith are gonna show up with weapons, and they're gonna. Beat the shit out of people. Um, the real Jacob ninety eight. Thanks for subbing to the channel, man. Let's play some donos real quick. See what you guys are saying. We've held them up for a while. What's up to the chat? We were supposed to take calls tonight, so we're gonna do that uh, as well. So we're gonna take a couple. I, I guess we won't take as many as I thought. This was definitely we talked a lot more than I thought we were gonna tonight about everything. So sorry, uh, but let me play the donos. Oh, e murder twenty bucks. Frog off. Up, Joe Love, you're out of nowhere steam showing up to air. You will shoot the ratings to the roof. BTW, who will you think will be in a Playboy magazine, Sasha or Alexa Bliss? Oh, I don't... I have a feeling that... I honestly think that neither one would do it. Maybe Sasha would do it. But I don't even think so. I don't even... I don't think they would do it. The way the culture is nowadays, like it used to be a big thing to be in Playboy. Now I feel like mm -hmm. we're kind of back to that less progressive stance of, uh, you know, people are looking down not on, on sex workers or, you know, anything like porn industry is kind of, I don't want to say all looked down upon, but it's not as open as it once was, pun intended. Yeah, you have to worry a lot more than, I mean, even then it was kind of like, uh oh, you know, but it's e-murder, thanks for the 20 bucks. I just don't think that, I can't see it, either one. It was a big deal, it was more celebrated. Uh, e-murder. For a fuck, someone donated nine. I'm getting hard, I got nine inches inside of your wife. Nine bucks, I'm shooting my semen to the ceiling. I'm coming, and my balls have to blue. Nine bucks, suck my dick. I will miss everyone, it sucks that I had to leave the world like this. I know that I will be missed oh. as well. I have influenced and touched millions of wrestlers, oh. especially the 12 year old boys. I oh. can still smell their underwear in heaven. Oh, my God. Duncan Chino? Oh, God. Don't my mind God. if I do. What's my name? Duncan Chino. It's a whole new game. Duncan Chino. You want to <laughs> goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Remember when Famous B thought he could finally win a major title on Monetize This and failed? Oh. Pepperidge Farms remembers. <laughs> Why got bring up old shit? Yeah, he came close. <laughs> he came close, man. But I gotta hear that whole thing. So give me that. Give me that whole deal right now. Shout out to uh, E Murder for the twenty bucks, oh, and then to that. Oh shit, oh, Pat Patterson. Oh. Do you think Sting will do a full schedule? Thank you to Pepperidge Farms who donated the 555. Pat Patterson, E Murder, and Pepperidge Farms. Aaron C. Um, yeah, it looks like he's Sting is going to do a near full schedule. Like he's not, Aaron, he's not going to do a, oh, five, WWE Brock Lesnar deal where he only shows up here and there. He's supposed to be often. Right. Like almost like 90% of the time or 80% of the time, not five appearances a year. So this is yeah it's it's apparently it's damn near a full schedule so congratulations man I mean it's not Al let's go Aaron it's C Dunk Dunkachino don't mind if I do let's go what's my name Dunkachino it's a whole new game Dunkachino you want creamy goodness I'm your friend say hello to my chocolate blend Attica Kuwa Latte Light this whole trial is out of sight. They pull me back in with hazelnut too. Caramel swirl. I know it was you. 
Everyone wants my Dunkachino. Can't get enough of my Dunkachino. Kids from 7 to 17 lining up for my Dunkachino. <laughs> it's going to be like the worst thing I've ever heard. Um, 407 is the first person to get through as my Skype loads and comes online. What's up, 407? Hey, what's going on, Joe? This is Joe Bless from Orlando calling. What's going on, hey, man? Yeah, man. I love Orlando. I have a question. Heck yeah, bro. I can't wait to you come back out here again once all this craziness is gone, man. Dude, I love the fucking... I love the breakfast food in Orlando. I just love Orlando, man. Like, I know that... Like, I don't know. Anyway, I, I think of Orlando. I think of driving around different places. Dude, so many different type of people, and everybody that I met was friendly as fuck. I loved it. Yeah, you know, there's no hostility out here, man. Yeah, it was nice. It's when I'm not in the only, the only one of the only places I've been to besides Massachusetts is Florida, and I know we always make fun of Florida because kind of crazy shit happens in Florida, no doubt about it. But I don't know. I'm I'm kind of okay with it because I've been to Florida so many times. Oh man, that's what's up, bro. That's what's up, man. Well, yeah, what's up? Hey man, I had a question for Famous B, man. All right. Um, hey Famous, um, how's it going, man? What's good, man? How you feeling? Uh, hey, the question was, um, like, since uh, I heard that there was a lot of dark matches in Lucha Underground, um, right, especially right. certain wrestlers that were not on the show, on the camera, you think right. they'll ever release oh. something where it's going to be maybe like on a YouTube channel or something, like all the dark matches of wrestlers that came and had matches there that we didn't see? So listen back to the show because you won't be able to hear Famous B on Skype for some dumb reason. Um, but we'll, oh, dang. Yeah, but listen, listen, he can hear you, so just listen back to the show. He's going to answer this. But, yeah, I mean, go ahead, Famous B. I'm sorry. I just wanted to tell him so he knew he couldn't hear you. Right, yeah, no, that was a pretty good question. Um, to answer the question, no, I do not think that any of that inf information or those matches will ever be released someday um the the main reason why they did that was just pretty much the scout talent that was that either they were interested in or that was or or the talent was interested in coming you know into the company and they just got a a chance to get a look at um but that was pretty much the main reason why they did those dark matches um, and yeah, no, I just don't see that me, ever uh, being, um, released, you know, but there was a lot of, um, interesting, uh, <laughs> workers that came in and out of Lucha Underground that did those matches that never saw, um, the time of day on air, so to speak. Did you um, see any of those matches? Like to piggyback off his question, did you see any of those matches? And if you did, what was one of those matches nobody saw that you were like, damn, these guys just killed it. And like, nobody even saw this. Oh man, not only did I see <laughs> not only did I see a lot of those matches, I was in a lot of those matches. Oh, I wrestled damn. Yeah, I wrestled a lot of um of matches um for you know, um, or dark matches for LU because I would be one of the guys that you know that they would put <laughs> in a ring with. Yeah, because, you were you know, one of the you were the one of the fed to the sharks, like famous B go out there and see what we, you know, see what this guy's doing. Uh, right, right. Like um uh, like uh, Kevin, like Kevin um uh carry on cross now nxt i did a lot of angles with him in dark matches um just a lot of people i was one of the um well well there was a five way where they when they first brought in jeff cop that we mm. all had it was myself versus uh willie mack versus um mm, willie mack's great the dare wolf <laughs> pj pj black oh. versus jeff cop versus um shane strickland and uh, it was a five-way match, but that was pretty much the match that pretty much uh, landed oh. Jeff uh, his job as Matanza. Yeah, because we went out there. We, oh, we, we dude, killed. that that match sounds fucking awesome, right? Everybody oh. you named right there. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, we nailed it. I was listening to it, too, because I actually that was one of the few matches that I did um, get a chance to watch back. Because um, somebody recorded I don't know how I got a hold of it, but I was watching it. I was watching it with a couple of the other boys, and you could hear them on commentary. They were like, this match is fucking awesome. This should be on fucking TV. Wow. You know, Van Pero was saying. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a, a good host of um, guys that came in for dark matches. Uh, I believe Scorpio Sky was a guy who came in once and um, had a dark match. TJ Perkins was another that I remember. Um, and probably a, a good, you know, few others as well that I remember. Um, 
uh, Tessa Blanchard, uh, she came in once and had a match. Uh, and probably a few more that probably just come, you know, come to mind randomly later. But those are a couple that I can name that I remember one, off the top of, the, of my head. One last question for Famous B. I know we got to move on and probably end the show, but soon. Uh, but I get, and we got to play more donations too. But one of the things we get a lot is uh, people ask about Sexy Star a lot. I think Daryl Stoltz asked about it in the chat, Seth Negan. People always ask me about that. Like, how's Famous B about Sexy Star? Everybody always wants to know about her. I don't know. Not sure why, but she Well, just... she had a lot of controversy uh, right. around her, you know, so I'm not sure what in particular, you know, she had a lot of controversy. It's almost like they want to be like, was she a psycho? Like it looks like, I mean, like, that's what people. No, she was real. Um, You know, she didn't come off that way or, or appear to be yeah. at all. Um, Yeah. You know, whatever issue she had that, um, you know, I led into uh, that angle or that beef with um, her and Rosemary. Right. Um, that was where she, she like took li her. she like shot on her and took liberties and punched and kicked her. For the people that don't know, what we're talking about. Right. Right. Exactly. I wanted a triple manias uh, a couple years ago. It's it seemed um, like they got that, it was that it seemed like an escalating situation. You know, somebody was upset at somebody already. Then somebody got hurt for real, sort of. And then somebody decided to respond back, and then somebody else responded back, and then she responded back, responded back, responded back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah. know. She just <laughs> she just went off the deep end. Um, yeah, but there was never anything like that. That was um, you know, like you you couldn't have saw that coming. Just working with her in Lucha Underground so, feels like a lot of people know, are defining her. I don't want to say defining her career, but this type of stuff happened all the time back in the day, and it never defined anybody's career. But right. for her, I feel like it's like that comes up every time. Like that's what people bring up now every time. Like, remember, like she, she, oh, remember when she did that? And it's like, wow, that's all people are talking. I'm like, remember all the great shit she did before that? Like, but it's that's all people bring up is what it, you know. People are really mad at her for that. So I guess, yeah, because I I feel like um it was one of those instances where it wasn't it, the, her shooting didn't seem like it was in an instance to protect herself from the person she shot on which was yeah. rosemary i think rosemary was just a, a i guess an innocent bystander in a match that she was fed up and just pissed off and yeah, she, she was mad with the match. to take it out on her it for was some odd reason it was an ugly match it was ugly it was triple mania right. by the way that was the year the triple mania had all kinds of i mean every year but <laughs> that year, every that, year it's a disaster that but. was the year jeff jarrett came out drunk as fuck oh god <laughs> that was the year before the year where Play my fucking music, Vampiro, right? That was the yeah. year before that year. Yeah, right. Jeff, yeah, the year before. And the year after, you know, it's the year before Jeff's drunk. The year after, Jeff is out there and Vampiro's music ain't hitting and he's looking around for Vampiro. And it's just like every year, Triple Mania is fucking hilarious. Like, if you don't watch Triple Mania, just for the and botches then, alone. What's his name's widow got hit in the front as oh, well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody fucking suicide dive. Somebody planch it on her or something like that. Yeah, it was <laughs> crazy. Uh, Daryl asked before as well, Famous B, said, what would your take on Chris Statlander be if she joined Team Taz, but she dropped the alien gimmick and rebranded as like the prodigy or the hot commodity? If she had more of like a serious role, do you think that would work for her? Famous or? B's like, who's that? <laughs> hey, I just said it. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> no but um yeah i'm 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 not too familiar with uh her work yeah she called she unfortunately it. injured called her it. leg not long ago and she's been off tv for quite some time she is in AEW. she does the alien gimmick where she boops people on the nose she does this like uh like she's she kind of puts like weird like alien type of like egyptian symbols on herself and then like right. does the et phone home poke and like oh, wow. like, like she, yeah it's really weird uh, she's kind of cool, uh, but it's a little weird. Kind of cool though. Uh, but yeah, I she, can't draw any comparison to Taz though with that. Like, yeah, I don't understand. I, that. I think if you because I've seen her with some stuff like on BTE and some other interviews and whatnot, and she just mm -hmm. has this totally different personality. Like she's really she likes uh, outer space and things of that nature. Joe and I covered some of the stuff she talked about before because she would be a perfect fit for like Final Frontier News with you know another one of Joe's mm -hmm. great channels. We and, get and along with her. But you know, you, yeah. know what, you know what she should do, Jake? I just it just came to me. She should take this to the next level as a heel if she was with Taz. That she is looking to sacrifice other wrestlers for the Anunnaki 
for when Planet <laughs> X when Planet X makes its elliptical return to our solar system, she's looking to sacrifice the other wrestlers in the name of the Anunnaki. There that you would go, be go total hilarious. Nut job with it. Yeah, go crazy. I like that. Yeah, go nuts. My anthology style, you know, get thetans and <laughs> Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> new and oh, yeah, that would be funny, you know, at least they could do something different with it cuz right now they they or at least when she was active not on the injured roster she didn't really do anything with her gimmick or herself she was putting on decent matches but it'd be great if like her opponent mocked her too and they got in like a fight type of thing and that person was like well i made you some new some new t-shirts statlander and the t-shirts are her with like a tin foil hat on and they could do this whole gimmick and she goes you can laugh all you want but when i sacrifice you to the anunnaki you know what I mean? And I and I put your address and your name and your whatever over them. They will come for you. You know, they you won't be spared. You won't get to live in the fifth. You you won't you won't ascend your soul to the fifth. You Do know, what the dark like, order should have done and, and oh be God. you know, these crazy cultish <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it could be really funny. That. It could yeah. be fun. But what did she do? She t- she tore her ACL, I forget. It was like eight months, she's out. Something with her leg. I I think that was it. But yeah, she's out for a while. And Karrion Cross put on Instagram or Twitter, one of the two, that he says good is new, and he seems to be ready for action. Uh, Woo. Haven't heard anything definitive about him being cleared, but he looks very impressive and like he's raring to go. So th- that he'll be back any time now. So, Statlander was still kind of you know limping around last we saw of her. So Karrion Cross. So we said six to eight weeks on him. We thought so. Yeah, we're we're uh, you know not far off. So it's, it's Ooh. what else we got. Oh, a little Actually, bit of the bubbly. That's it. Not too bad. Bubbly? Look at this stuff. Casey oh, is raw. What oh, up, Casey? A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's uh, Casey is raw. Says, I want to have a cup of Joe's load. Gorilla Strong is an F word. I will beat him one on one. Uh, love you, Joe. Jake, stay sexy. F you, Drew. Fish lips. Uh, is a <laughs> cheesy turd guzzling faggot. I will steal I, Tara from you. Ooh, wow. Real wow. threats there. I mean, that's... He even took a shot at somebody else, but we luckily it blanked it out. Well, good, there you go. Good God, Casey is what raw. What else we got? Oh, <laughs> a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Our Look buddy. No oh, Arnthal James oh, Simpson. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Arnthal, hey, what's up? NXT moving to a new night is more of a cop-out and a desperate attempt for ratings. If they really want to beat AEW all, what they have to do is get more creative, compelling, and innovative. Yeah, they're going to have to, again, cross over into the mainstream and get people involved that haven't been involved in wrestling. Yeah. James, thank you, as always, Oriental James. And yeah, in the chat, hit that like button, guys. If you haven't hit that like button, and sign up on Patreon tonight. If you guys can do it for a dollar or two dollars or something, check out my Patreon. Tons of stuff is coming this week Ah, and this year. Yeah. Smoke weed every day. Moss Blaze. So got COVID calling matches here in Florida now. I have no appetite and stuffy nose. Thank God no fever are other major problems. Whoa. Congrats yeah. to Jake getting married. Make some babies. Famous Thank you. Be nice hearing you. Joe and JCS, yes, much love. I will survive. All right, Moss Blaze, let us know how it goes, man. I, I, You are now the 15th confirmed person I know, kind of, who had COVID. Yeah, he told us in the chat at the beginning of the night. I, I wished him well, and hopefully he continues to get better and doesn't get worse. I'll be happy Party. that you, your body builds up that immunity. Balor tries helping you eat. Cross returns shelves McAfee. Oh, Cross returns and takes out McAfee. I mean, that's a little weird, though, right? I don't know. Or helps him, I think. No, no, no. He said uh, helps McAfee. Oh. So Cross returns because Balor would try and right. help the Undisputed Era. Because mm-hmm. Pat's team came out and originally circled the ring around Balor when he came back to you know talk about him and the title and whatnot. And then he called out the Undisputed Era to kind of save his ass. So it makes sense if Balor comes out to try and help. You know, Pat's got something up his sleeve. And then there comes Cross and beats the hell out of Balor. Like, that would be... That'd be a great way to do it. And that distraction leads to Undisputed Era losing. That could be something, you know? Right. And that's that's your surprise cheat angle to get Pat over. So, and it keeps the feud going. What the fuck that point is, Vince? What the fuck that point is, Vince? What the fuck that point is, Vince? Here's to my guy, Jake the Married Man DeMarco. Woo. Once COVID is done, you come down to my fam restaurant slash bar right on the water in downtown Providence. You and your wife and Joe and his wife, we all get drinks. 
Just posted a Christmas post, not W. Oh, nice, Botch Club. We'll check it out to end the show. I will play that. You've got to yeah, check well, it out. Absolutely. Check that out on Instagram. Thank you so much, Botch Club. I, I was in Providence for college, you know, went to Johnson & Wales. And, and by know, the way, he's coming. Place, you're, so. you're go, he'd be going up to you, Botch Club. He'd be going up yeah. to you. I'd no, go up and Joe would go I'd down. I'd go down, baby, yeah. I always Ooh. go down. Uh, Botch Club, thank you, man. He's right in between us too, Jake. You know what I mean? Right in Rhode Island. Make a hell of a sexy sandwich. I'm right on the border of Rhode Island almost, so like I can get there really easily. Yeah, it's, it's about a two-hour drive for me, a little less. Thanks, Botch Club. You just bought one of my kids a Christmas gift. I appreciate it. Nine ninety nine, baby. Thanks, Vince. Uh, Botch <laughs> Club. If you guys want to support us uh, this month, uh, Patreon would be really the, the awesome way to go. We got to get back up and uh, get rolling on Patreon again, and that'd be awesome if you guys check your patrons, make sure you're up there, and if you're a twenty five dollar producer or above, definitely thank you to you guys, and I hope you, uh, if you can do that, jump up there, get all the rewards, check out the tiers on Patreon. Everybody's having a blast on Patreon right now. We got more videos coming, we got more podcasts coming, and some exclusive stuff. It's been a little bit main crazy this week with my voice leaving me. Uh, but Michael Sachs, welcome back to the patron. Thank you. Sith Negan, the top patron of all. Thank you to him. Tony from Revere, uh, back in the producer spot. Constipated Rock and so many others. We'll be shouting you all out on the 5th and beyond. I'll get everything squared away. Hell yeah. Uh, DJ Scandalous said PewDiePie will be on WWE Watch. He'll get Superman punched, you know, because they uh, want to <laughs> reach to <laughs> grab as many, you know, influencers as they can. NXT would, would have to be careful because they can't really bring in a legend. That doesn't work for their brand, I feel. And we've seen that bringing in people from the main roster, that does jack shit. <laughs> that, that really does. Bringing in Kevin Owens, it was cool, but didn't help. Charlotte did the reverse, kind of the opposite of what they wanted. And Charlotte says she'll finish 2020 strong. We don't know if that means she's coming back at this point, but apparently there's no real plan set for her at this current time. Uh, it seems more like they have ideas for her rolling around, you know, Royal Rumble time. Uh -huh. Oh, and you said Royal Rumble. <laughs> I was like, yeah. With I don't her, know if she knows this, but Royal Rumble. Rumble. I don't know if she knows this, but uh, Royal Rumble is in 2021. Yeah, right. Exactly. So. They moved everything. I mean, WrestleMania could be in June. I know. I don't know how she's going to finish 2020, 2020 strong. strong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she got but, about a good three <laughs> three to four <laughs> weeks, and uh, I don't know how she's going to do that. Damn. And then Mandy Rose is still listed as week to week, so they're trying to avoid surgery with her, so they're taking their time. And we don't know how long, but in the meantime, Dana Brooke is going to continue her feud with Reckoning. And Brooke had one hell of a black eye on her face from their match with Mia Yim the other night. Oh yeah, and she lost her mask that that match too, right? We talked yeah, about that. Yeah, and essentially was I believe thrown out of Retribution. We'll see though. It was kind of odd. Maybe they wanted to move her back to NXT only or something, so that's why they did that. I mean, I can't think of. Or at least just get her out of Retribution and have her do her own thing because they can't utilize her. It's good to have you know when they had multiple women, it made sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but she's not out there most of the times when the men are, and yeah. then when the men are attacking other people, she's not involved. So. Because they don't want to do man on woman violence, so I get it. But why have her in the group if you're not going to use her? So right, okay, I could see that. I wonder if she will stay on the main roster then, or if it will be going back down to NXT. I don't think she'll go back down. I'd prefer her to, but oh, I, I, I imagine she'll be main roster staying. All right, listen. Well, we're we're out of here, guys. Right now, you can check out Famous B on Crackle, Lucha Heroes, or Heroes yeah. of Lucha Libre, rather. And yeah. that's Heroes of Lucha Libre, man. I'm getting it cracking on crackle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so everybody check that out. Um, thanks for having me, Joe. I appreciate it. As usual, Jake, um, if you need an ordained minister, I know a guy. So Ooh. get at me, y'all. Can you get him over there to buy tomorrow afternoon? Yeah. It would have been great. <laughs> you know, have him, have him for tomorrow. Oh, you could do it via <laughs> Skype now, probably. You put set up the laptop. Yeah, and you look there at you go. That's funny. Yeah, we're going to have to have a I, Zoom wedding. A Zoom wedding. I, I was ordained at one point. I don't know if my no. accreditation is still active, but I can't marry myself, so wouldn't work that way anyways. That's <laughs> right. Funny, though. You need to look for some altar boys to molest. Oh, there we go. I did it as a joke. I just wanted to be Reverend Jake DeMarco. I went to One Minute Ministries and <laughs> the Universal <laughs> Church of Life. It was cheap. I signed up. I could just imagine at your wedding, at your wedding it's like, <laughs> if anybody is against this, speak now or forever hold your peace. Why are you talking about me, bro? <laughs> Pops out of a trash can, just hey, bro. You know what? Though? <laughs> I 
know you're talking in, about me. In all honesty, I think he'd give you a big <laughs> hug. JD would give you a big hug. Let's check out this guy hanging his Christmas Fire. decorations via Botch Club. You know where this is going. You oh, know exactly where this is going. Oh, boy. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> Hang that Christmas tree. I hear it crack now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you ruined it. <laughs> By the way, uh, that was fucking hilarious. That guy fucking downward spiral. That guy came down like the Twin Towers. Um, okay, everybody, thanks for listening. We actually, even though it says we didn't hit our goal, we kind of did because Super Chats don't count. So if you had the 30 bucks, we kind of hit the goal, man. So shout out to everybody for hitting that goal tonight. Uh, appreciate it. We may have to get Jake a hotel to, to romp his bride. Uh, ladies and gentlemen in the chat, 69 and hit the like button down below. Can we get to 200 likes? Uh, I don't know. We'll see if we can do it. I'll try to get the audio version of this show up uh, by tonight on Patreon, the audio of this. And I have a special personal podcast coming to Patreon as well to talk about some shit. And uh, my voice is feeling a little bit better, but just a little pain. I don't know. I either have esophageal cancer or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm dying. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something. Don't you die on me. Hope it's not that. I think it's. I could have an infection too, like a sinus infection or. That makes sense. I, if it I drips down to your throat. That'll hurt. Yeah, I got lots of drip going on, but also just the esophagus part is just, just like a weird pain. I don't know. Speaking of drip, look at all the sixty nines in the chat. Now we're talking. Yeah, baby. You know what's weird is there's multiple flies in my house. Maybe it, just, yeah, it hasn't been cold enough to kill them all No, off. I mean, dude, it's been cold, so, like, something... I have a feeling there's some piece of food somewhere or something we don't oh, know they, about. <laughs> they migrated in. Yeah, something's up. That's weird. Anyway, we're out of here. Stay sexy. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow night for Monetize This. Uh. And shout out to the top donator, uh, Soundwave92. He's going to take home that JCS Digital Championship. Shout out to the man, Soundwave92. Soundwave 92. A dirty prick. Yeah, the top doanchin.